scandalous, and I love it. Yeah. Uh, your show is the best, 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 best show on the air. The Wendy Williams Experience. Everybody. Welcome to the show. <laughs> I'm Wendy Williams. So glad to be here with you guys today. We got company coming in. Turns out a big fan of the show. Who knew? In between court sessions, they listen over at the Judge Marilyn Million. Yeah, people's court set. So Judge Marilyn Million will be in, except it's not going to be during the hour of truth. It's going to be during advice hour. Because if you know like I know, then you already know that she's got an advice column on Match.com. She specializes in small claims and domestic abuse. So if you've got a question for Judge Marilyn Million today during advice hour and it's dealing with small claims. Oh, I love those kind of claims uh, or, or those kind of cases and um, or domestic violence. Uh, please feel free to fax in. 866 Wendy Facts. And, you know, of course, the celebrities are up to no good. We'll talk about Vanity Damn Fair and that Damn B Damn Anse. We'll talk about Marilyn Manson and Patti LaBelle, second part to that story. Little Fizz, Ice Cube, Jason Blair, and Carmen Electra, plus many more. Okay, so you guys keep it where you got it. This is the place to be. Welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience. This is Babyface. This is Beyonce. This is Don King, and you're listening to the voice of the community. <laughs> and proud to be a winner of the 2005 Marconi Award for Urban Station of the Year. Congratulations, BLS. WBLS. For winning the award. 107.5. We'll WBLS. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. Hello? Check clear, one, two, one, two. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Hey! <laughs> oh, by the way, Artie, I bought you your lunch today. Oh! Yeah. I wasn't going to say nothing. Beans a la Hunter. Oh, my Or Wellington. Or yes. Can whatever. I go back and warm it up? Yeah, sure. We'll send somebody. Send somebody. I made those. They soaked. Now, remember, <laughs> one of the interns. How many minutes? About two? No. Uh, yeah, two minutes is good. I put a little bit of water in it so they wouldn't be all dried up. So all you literally have to do, um, put them in for two minutes, but at the minute mark, smush them around. There's a little bit of rice in there. The rice is not the main thing. That's, you know. Yeah. And let the, let the top take the top off a little bit, too. So I'll Take the top off a lot of it. Yeah, take the top off a lot of it. It's not the microwave at your house. You don't care if it splatters up, do you? Oh, okay. 
Okay. You know, I mean, that's the only reason that you put a paper towel or a right, top on right, it because right. you don't want it splatter and you have to clean it. Yeah, but I was trying to be courteous of other cores. Whatever. They're not courteous. Have you opened the refrigerator in the kitchen recently? Okay. I mean, geez, the, the smell, the mold, the fungus. And you know how it is, everybody in the office right now. Don't play. You know, the work refrigerator is a, a, a mess. Yeah. Just full of germs and funk. Anyway, yeah, those soaked uh, about 15 hours, and they cooked for 12 hours. Damn. As a matter of fact, um, Risha, who's uh, an intern from time to time here, babysat for us on Sunday. Oh. And so she, um, Risha, she looks like Halle Berry. Oh, oh my son loved that. Oh, my yeah. gosh. His father had to pull him aside. Now, look, you know, yeah. you don't be fresh. You don't be, you know, yeah. all of the above. Yeah. We walked in the kitchen. He's sitting in our lap. I'm like, Ooh. oh, look at this. <laughs> 97 pounds, he's like a grown man boy. Yeah. Sitting in Risha, you know, she's about a buck ten soaking wet. Yeah. And she looks, everybody, like Halle Berry. Halle Berry, that Halle Berry haircut, same complexion, the whole bit. Long neck, the whole thing. So, you know. Mm. Little Kev, he loved that. That's right. She babysat when we went to um, Mary J. Blige's party. So, by the time we got home from the party, it was like 1130, but she knew, you know, turn off the beans at 10 o'clock. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. So anyway, so what's going on around here? I got part two to the Patti LaBelle story. Yesterday, I told you she was dropped from Def Jam, but there's actually, you know, more to the drama. And I'll tell you what it centers around. It centers around Patti's relationship with L.A. Reid, the president of Island Def Jam. Apparently, Miss Patti just celebrated her 60th birthday. It was a big to-do over the weekend in the Bahamas. There were a lot of people there. There was a full reunion of the uh, group LaBelle, for which Patti was a member. Nona Hendricks was there. Sarah Dash was there. Plus, performances by Nelly and Kelly. Kelly Rollins, don't get it twisted. They're not messing around anymore. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe he cheats on, on Ashanti with Nelly. You know, maybe they have that kind of relationship. You know, we can hit each other off and understand that there are no romantic parameters here. Ashanti uh, is still my girl. And when I get back on dry land, you don't blow up my spot. Spot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm just talking. But you know how likely that is. However, Ashanti was there as well. So Nelly was either very busy that weekend or or anyway, he was performing. Uh, Kelly Rollins, Ashanti was there. Gerald Levert was there. Oh. Um, <laughs> Yolanda Adams was there. And uh, soul man Michael McDonald was there. Oh. Absent from this big party, Beyonce, Usher and Outkast. All three of these people pulled out at the last minute. And the word is, is that they pulled out because they've got a good relationship with L.A. Reid and they want to keep it that way. Well, let me tell you where the drama unfolds, okay? Because I didn't tell you this part of the story yesterday. I never got back to it. By the way, did you know 50% of you play the lottery? That was yesterday's people poll question. Yeah, 50% say yes, 50% say no. By the way, the new people poll question on the wendywilliamsexperience.com, do you brush after each meal? Mm. Now, let's just start off right here. I know none of you carry a toothbrush, so therefore the answer is no. You know, after each meal. However, I do a lot of flossing and toothpicking. You do a lot of flossing. Yeah. And some people swish with water. That don't work, though. Mm-mm. And some people they just swish. Art. Oh, <laughs> all right. <sighs> Anyway, um, so this all went down in the Bahamas, and they say the absence of these people raised a lot of suspicion uh, that their arms were perhaps twisted by L.A. Reid. Even Babyface wasn't there oh. for Miss Patty's 60th birthday. And you know, that's a damn shame. Um, according to the sources, L.A. Reid did absolutely nothing to promote Patty LaBelle's album that is out right now or the single that led up to the album. Now, of course, you know, Patty came on this show to promote her classic CD. She booked this show herself, though. Did you know that? Okay. Did you know that when she went on Good Morning America on July 1st and did a big outdoor concert two weeks before her album was to uh, be released, or maybe it was the same week of... Anyway, Patty booked that herself. Hello, Good Morning America. This is Patty LaBelle. No, this is really me. This is not the record label. No, they're not doing anything for me. No, this is Patty. Listen, I need you to book me uh, to do a, a morning extravagant. No, no, this isn't Patty. This is not the record label. No, 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 no. I'm getting no cooperation. I understand. Listen, honey. Listen, baby. I know. I know I've been in the business for 45 years. Oh, I know I'm a legend, baby. I know. I know. Oh, well, thank you. That Wendy is a mess. I did enjoy doing her show. But listen, I booked that myself, too, by the way. Uh, no. Listen. 
please, we can argue about this when I see you. No, this is really me, baby. This is no no people from the record label. I'm telling you I'm getting no cooperation. I understand. I know you thought that this was only, uh, this kind of behavior only happened to the young and the stupid. No, listen to me. Listen to me right now. This is me, Patty. I love you. Ooh. Okay, baby, I'm glad you believe me now. Now listen, tell me when you have available for me. I'll cook for the entire staff. Oh. Yes, yes, baby. Yes. No, no, 45 years in the business. Yes, baby. Yes, yes. You have seen me sell clothes on QVC. Yeah, no, 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 no. A series of books. Yes, baby. I perform for the kings and the queens. Yes, 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 baby. Yeah, baby, it's me. Baby, I'll need a full VH1 special like TLC to explain how it is that you stay in this business for this damn long and get no support from your record. Baby. Oh, thank you. You got me down for July 1st. Okay, now that's going to be an outdoor concert, right? And all the all the hoopla, all the kids, all the children are going to be there and all my fans from all around. Yes, baby. Oh, thank you, baby. You know I still have my fans. Oh, well, I just don't know what is going on with the label. But baby, mother is about to be 60 years old uh, in, in, in a few months. And I just can't sit around and wait for these these new heads of record labels and stuff to understand how it goes. Thank you, baby. I'll see you July 1st. Now you all just fax me what you all want to eat and I'll make you food. Thank you, baby. Well, apparently, they even opened the Bryant Park Grill, which is right there at the performance site for Good Morning America. They opened it specially for Patty so that she can go inside and calm down. She was floored. Nobody from the label showed up July 1st at Good Morning America. No, hey, baby. No, it's me, Patty. I'm pulling up in my own car. Yeah, baby. Can you just send one of your interns or something to just park my car? No, yeah, baby. No, my makeup and hair person is supposed to meet me. I pay that person myself. But um, nobody from the record la- nobody from the record label is here. Nobody. You mean I booked this myself and nobody? Baby, I'm feeling faint. Somebody open the Bryant Park Grill. Let me go sit down. Miss Patty got to sit. Miss Patty got to sit. Miss Patty got to sit. Oh, okay. And then meanwhile, the door opens to the Bryant Park Grill after the performance. And who is it? It's L.A. Reed. Uh-oh. Here he comes. Miss Patty, I'm sitting here fanning myself. Well, here he comes. They say when he um, when he showed up, he promised her that there would be more promotion on her album and more attention paid, but nothing happened. Meanwhile, the beginning of planning for 60th birthday extravaganza in the Bahamas, which happened this past weekend, was already in full throttle. And Def Jam was asked to, you know, foot some of the bill. They did absolutely nothing. Nothing. Adding insult to injury on August 31st. Patty got a huge standing ovation at the World Music Awards in California. She did her song, I'll Stand By You. And here comes L.A. backstage. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> and he comes to Patty and he says, this is what, the, no, this is, this is the quote. L.A. came backstage and said to Patty, what a great song. Why haven't you recorded it? And Patty looked at her deadpan and said, it's on the album you're refusing to promote. At that point, they say, is when the die was cast and the rumors were circulating that Patty would be dropped from Def Jam. And here's Patty's quote. Uh Uh-oh. I've been in this business for 45 years. This is what she told the crowd at the Bahamas on, on the weekend, everybody. I've done everything myself. The record labels don't care about you. I'm not here because of them. I don't care. Who knows it? I told Ivana Trump what happened, and she said, F them. Wow. If they don't appreciate you. Wow. 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 And her comments were met with explosive, thunderous applause. Miss Patty, I'm sorry to hear about what happened. If you'd like to add, add any sidebar comments, you can always email me or visit the show or telephone call. I don't care. Damn. What kind of treatment is that? All right, open up your beans. I don't am. please don't let them cool off. Well, They're my, back from the microwave. I was intrigued by your story about Patty. You no, in no, a one no. woman show. No, no. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's cheaper that way. Who needs the rest of the chaos? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, keep it here, everybody. We're in the building. Wendy, man. Michelle? Yeah. You're just having casual sex with him. Right. There is no engagement. No. He's got a girlfriend. So call. I'm pregnant now. Did I keep it? Wait, hold on for just one moment. I'm about to reach through the phone and crack her skull. (laughs) The Wendy Williams Experience. 
107.5 WBLS with the return of the $107,000 cash guarantee. Backed by popular demand, it's your chance to pick up an easy grand. $1,000 winners throughout the day. This is your man, Steve Harvey. I know you want to get some of them bills off your back. Set your radio to wake up and get paid on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And listen for Steve to give you the cue to call in to win each morning at 7.15 a.m. So get ready at your shot at winning one thousand dollars cash we're gonna give it to you just like that flip 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 then listen for steve again at 12 15 and then again at 5 15 be the 10th caller and you're an instant winner cut it fold it up put it in your pocket it make a nice little hump in there put a rubber band on it make everybody think you're born it's a one hundred and seven thousand dollar cash guarantee on 107.5 wbls today's r&b and classic soul Everybody, it's the Wendy Williams experience. Art likes the beans. Love them. Love them. So anyway, everyone, um, oh, I have something for you to win. Yeah, you know what? I'll just take the first person who is 21 years or older because there's probably going to be liquor in the joint. It's a comedy experience over in Newark. Um, it's BLS, hooking this up for you. Kevin Hart will be telling jokes, Alex Thomas and TK Kirkland. It's going to be Saturday, October 29th at the Wisdom African American Cultural Center in downtown Newark. And um, so let's just pick up the phone now and see who wins. Hi, BLS. Hello. Yes. Are you Are you 21? Yes. Would you like to go to Newark on the 29th? Sure. Where do you live now? Uh, Jersey City. Okay, good, perfect. Okay, so what's your name? Uh, Gail. All right, Gail, you'll be going to check out the comedy show in downtown Newark at the Wisdom African American Cultural Center. Okay. Like I said, it's Saturday the 29th. Kevin Hart will be telling jokes. Alex Thomas, TK Kirkland. I know all three. All three are funny. Okay, and what time does that start? I don't know. <laughs> okay. I mean, you're asking me too many questions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I give you what I got. Why do you work Saturday night? No, actually, I had plans, but I want to know if this starts early. I can do both. Oh, I don't know. Okay. I mean, I would say a comedy show, you know, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, what are your plans? Um, There's something going on on 181st Street, I believe. Yeah, well, that'll be popping off around 2 a.m. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so, okay. All right, well, hold on a moment. and we'll take Yes? Do you? I don't know if you remember me. I came to a Super Bowl party that you had in Jersey. Well, I don't remember you particularly. That's the one that um, the firm throws, right? Hun Hamlin and Ridley Law Firm? No, it was with Jaheim and... Yeah, 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 yeah. Hun Hamlin and Ridley. They throw that every year. Okay. Yeah. That's always a fun uh, event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it every year? Yeah. Well... It's every year. This is the first year that it's been out. It used to be at my attorney's house. And one okay. time, at, w- at one point, it just got so crowded. I was like, Ray, do you know half the people who are right. milling around your house right now? Because um, <laughs> I know a couple of these boys from the block. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and you, I told you about Coleone and Paul. So I came brother who was there. Yeah. yeah. I, I know both of them. Okay. Okay. Well, we was talking about them that night, but I'm going to just wait for the information for these tickets. I don't want to hold you up. Sha- well, Shaq Kim's brother was there that night, and Corleone, I was sitting right next to him. Yeah, I came with Shaq I- with um, Paul, Shaq Kim's brother. Oh, okay. All right. Well, hold on a moment. We're going to give you your information about the tickets, okay, Gail? Okay, Wendy. All right. Hold on. Okay. And we'll see who else is calling. Now, the tickets are gone, you all. Hi, it's Wendy here. By the way, this hour of the show is brought to you by the Dove Beauty Bar. I love that. Hello. Hi, Wendy. This is Marianne. Hi, Marianne. How are you? Perfectly snobby. (laughs) Do you know, you actually have other people recognizing my voice. Oh, my gosh. I went to a WBLS event when Steve Harvey was hosting that in the morning at the Apollo. Mm -hmm. And a blind man that was uh, performing, a musician. Uh Uh-huh. He said, when I told him my name was Marianne, he said, are you snobby Marianne that calls into Wendy? <laughs> uh, he recognized my voice. He turned me into a quasi-celebrity. Ah. But what I was calling to ask you, was your blind item yesterday? No, I don't want to talk about it. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, actually, you know what? You can, because I didn't guess. I don't know for a fact. Who do you think it is? Um, well, I'm sure it's Flex Alexander, because that seems like it was an old suit that had come out. And um, the person actually named names, you know, the person that was named, mm. you know, the person on the, was named yeah. uh, that had sued Flex Alexander a while mm-hmm. ago, mm-hmm. a couple of months ago. All right, the dogs need you, Mom. Huh? The dogs need you, Marianne. Uh, um, yeah, she's going nuts. Yeah. 
Uh, but the other thing that I was going to ask you about was the thing about your husband's father. Yeah. There was something in my family where the my father's brother mm -hmm. did not know who his mother was. Mm -hmm. The person that he thought was his sister mm. was actually his mother. Mm. And he didn't find out until the day that his real mother died. Wow. She called him in to tell him mm. because she didn't want him to think that his mother was dead. You know, she wanted him to know that his mother was still alive. Wow. Yeah, wow. but the person that he thought was his sister was his mother because in those days, yeah. you know, she had him and she was about 11 <clears throat> years old. Wow. Mm -hmm. And he actually hated her and everything. Wow. So it was a big deal. He didn't find out until he was about 50 years old. Wow. Well, and he just fell to pieces. Wow. All families have them kind of skeletons or some, something crazy going on. Yeah. Thank well, you, good luck to you. Thank you, Marianne. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I want to shout out to Stephanie Cohen and all my good friends over at Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports in Secaucus, New Jersey. Have you guys stopped by there yet? I have to tell you something. They, um, they have some really fantastic, fantastic stuff. That was one of my, my stops on the way in today uh, to work. I'm getting this bed from them. You know, for guest room, I really like it. Just, just really beautiful stuff. Stephanie designs furniture. Plus, they got the Martha Stewart signature gallery stuff. They've got the most fabulous collections, collections, uh, a collection of uh, throw rugs. Um, they're not, they're not just some crap. I mean, just like really, really, you know, it's very easy to go out and I mean, just get furniture that. And there's nothing wrong with this particular furniture. It's just that if you've graduated from. The lacquer overlay with the hot glue gun. Do you know what I mean? That you get when you go to some of these large chain stores. If you've just kind of graduated. Laminate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm a fan of lacquer. Don't get me wrong. But I like good lacquer. And and I just, you know, but I'm, I've grown up. You know what I mean? And so they, they've got grown up stuff. And they got the wholesale prices, which means the, the price is right. And the two floors of furniture and stuff. They happen to be on my way to work, so I stopped by there today because I'm trying to, you know, get things together. <sighs> anyway, so shout out to Stephanie and shout out to all my friends there in Secaucus at Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. Um, L.A. Weight Loss, 1-800-448-TRIM. What can I say? You know, the, the weight comes off. It, well, listen, if that's you, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time. One, look, yeah, I know your your smile is beautiful and your personality is even more beautiful, but there's something going on Put that, that perhaps there. perhaps is more of a hindrance than not, and you might not even realize it, and it could have to do with your weight. Um, if you've ever wanted to lose weight and you want to do something that is affordable, and if you're lazy like me, you're not going to the gym, and if you don't want to pop pills... And if you want a one-on-one -on -one weight loss counselor, it's like your own personal shrink. When you're frustrated, you call or go in and see this person. When you've achieved, um, you know, small goals and large goals, you call and you tell this person. When you're getting attention that you've never had in your life and you really need somebody to talk to about it, how to navigate your way through your, no, your newfound life, call and talk to your L.A. Weight Loss 101 counselor. I'm telling you, they're wonderful. Wonderful program, wonderful people. Did I mention that they're affordable? Okay. Here's the telephone number. Call when you're ready. 1-800-448-TRIM. 1-800-448-TRIM. And you tell them Wendy sent you, for real. It's 1-800-448-TRIM. I've lost weight on L.A. Weight Loss. My weight is still off. But, you know, just thank you, L.A. Weight Loss. Ow. All right. So, um... Vaughn Harper comes in at 7 o'clock with the quiet storm. Don't forget, tomorrow night, the place to be is the Laugh Factory. Yep, 8th Avenue, 42nd Street. It's the hippest strip in town every Wednesday night. It's the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience. And it's been going on for over a year. We always have a lot of fun. Tomorrow night, my man Steve Harvey's coming through. I think just for drinks and chicken. You know, the Negroidian Buffet. You know, he's not coming in to tell jokes or nothing like that. I mean, if he gets on stage, it's a little bonus. But, uh, you know, we're not expecting. Um, but uh, Steve's coming through tomorrow. Wow. And so, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. Steve's here in the mornings, you know. You start off your day listening to him. 7.15, he gives you your chance to win with the $107,000 cash guarantee money. And then um, 12.15, it happens again with Mark Jordan. And then with me at 5.25. So your next chance to win is with me at 5.25 today on your radio station with the guaranteed $107,000. Your chance to win is at 5.25 right here on the Wendy Williams Experience, WBLS. <laughs> Hello? All right.
right, everybody. Well, thank you, Angie, for faxing in. By the way, shout out to Angie Martinez. Angie, I haven't seen you in so many years, and I heard Mary J shout you out from the stage. She sat at a sat together, and, and I was like, oh my gosh, Angie's here. I would love to see her. I, you know, pictures of the baby and that whole thing, you know? I didn't see her. Anyway, um, Angie, though, a different Angie. Or maybe it's the same Angie, after all. Everybody does listen here. No shade. Um, but Angie says, Wendy, it's best to cover your food when you use public microwaves. It keeps stuff from other people's food from falling into your food. Look at the top of the inside of the microwave and see what is hanging up there. I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know. Oh, my gosh. I don't even want to know. Here comes Art. Look, here he is with the food. Shh, don't tell him. It could liquefy and fall into how are the How are the beans? Good? Oh, Good. Do we want some? That's last last month's beef patty from one coworker, and goodness only knows what else from another. So there's a big deal going on in High Point, um, in High Point, uh, North Carolina, where Fantasia's from, and some of the best furniture in the country. I've never furniture shopped in North Carolina. I can never understand why it is that people caravan down there, and then caravan back with all this furniture. You know what I mean? Like, why do that when there's good furniture? I mean, for goodness sakes, if if you're in L.A., you know, you're in L.A. That's a major city. There's furniture every place. If you're, you know, if you're in South Carolina, okay, and shout out to everybody there. I understand that. You know, you go the next state over and you may get some furniture or whatever. Hell, in New York, you can buy anything 24 hours a day, including a fabulous sectional. And we work, I mean, just, I just, but a lot of people do shop in High Point, um, you know, down there. Back in the day, they used to call it Land of the Dead, Fantasia said, when um, when they were growing up. But in her new book, Fairy Tale, that's where um, she says that, you know, she couldn't read until after she attended, um, until after she attended, you know, all the local schools there and whatnot. Well, apparently there's some citizens of High Point who want the sign that reads. I didn't even know the sign was there. It says, Welcome to High Point, home of Fantasia Barino. Oh. But now, since, you know, she came out and said that um, she's illiterate, um, people don't want that. However, a council member by the name of Vladimir Alexander said that the city has no plans of removing the sign. Although he did say that it's not permanent, but they have no plans on removing it. The mayor, Becky Smothers, says the city has bigger issues. Here's her quote. There are a lot more serious things happening right now than Fantasia's sign. So, in other words, you can put that where? Back there. Britney Spears is back to boozing and smoking. Uh Truth be told, after I had the baby, I couldn't wait to have, like, some champagne or something like that. Which had nothing to do with my reason for not breastfeeding. But it ended up that, wow, I'm not breastfeeding. I can actually, you know, wildly diet this 103 pounds that I gained off me. and, um, And I can have something to drink. But they say, um, I don't know whether Bre- uh, Brittany is breastfeeding or not. I, I venture to say no. You know, I just couldn't keep up with the whole breastfeeding schedule. And that whole pumping thing, I had three different suction devices. None of that stuff worked. It's like either live boob or nothing. And I just, mm-mm. So Brittany, they say, is back to drinking and smoking to chase away the baby blues. Now, she delivered the baby three weeks ago. And the baby blues are um, a very real thing. They say she gained 40 pounds during the pregnancy. And she looks miserable. But, or she's acting miserable. But I saw a picture of Brittany. I think it was in yesterday's newspaper or something like that. Three weeks later, her stomach, I mean, she, she. Her physically, you know, I couldn't see, like, what all was going on with her face. And I wasn't paying attention to the, you know, the quality of her quaff or anything like that, you know. But her stomach looked reasonable. I mean, she'll get back. They're making this big panic. She's 23 years old, for goodness sakes. What 23-year-old doesn't snap back, at least to where they were? Like, if you were pudgy to begin with, then you snap back to somewhere in the area of your original pudge. At 23, you really don't have to worry too much after you deliver a baby. And if she's worried about the C-section, well, that's what they make Dermablend for. I'm about to, about to pose for a calendar. And um, it's... um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and you snapped your head back over like you just saw an accident. <laughs> Seagram's. We're doing the 12 months, the Wendy Williams experience. So there are 11 beautiful girls, and they've been taking their pictures all through the week. So, you know, my birthday's in July, and that that was my reaction when they said, Wendy, we want you to put, not they, my manager, you know, who happens to be my lover, Uh 
you know, he says, you know, Wendy, you know, you need to pose, pose for July. That's when your birthday is. And I'm like, well, you can't cover up in July. It was the summer. You know, I can give you face and attitude and hair and whatnot. Oh. And I can give you, you know, naked shoulders and a swathed in a fur coat. Yes. But in the middle of July? Frightful way. Oh, exactly, Mark. <laughs> but, you know, with a little derma blend over my tummy tuck area. And it's going to be close up, I would imagine. Yeah. And I'm not posing in a one piece. I'm going to pose in a two piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or roll Daisy Dukes. I love the source. Yeah. The source, they didn't do any airbrushing. It was amazing to me because I didn't have any pantyhose or anything like that. It was amazing to me, you know, how that, that picture turned out. But I have cellulite. I'll be the first one to tell you that. So there will be some airbrushing going on. Since it's my calendar, I'll be able to make the rules. Yeah. Say, that's not my magazine. I couldn't make the rules. You know what I mean? When I do uh, photo shoots for other... But no, 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 this is the Wendy Williams Experience calendar. Yes. So I can make the rules. I have the same expression you had on the New York Times, the New York Magazine. Oh, yeah, that's my model expression. I love that. Yeah, you know what? And I don't know why I do that expression. That To me, that's the quintessential, like, Naomi and all the modeling girls. You know, when they pose for pictures, they're not all cheesy like me and you are. Mm. They they look at the camera, with, they, they drop their look like this. Oh, ooh. <laughs> And it looks like you want to cut somebody, but it also looks like it's all about me and these beautiful clothes that I'm modeling. They drop their face. Yes, they do. Right? Gay Steve? Mm -hmm. yeah, you do. No smiling. Mm -hmm. you got to drop your face and look. Mm, take me. Yeah. Mm. Or I'll kill you. Ooh, yeah. Man. Yeah. And that has, that's it. It's not take me at all sex. It's take me or I'll kill you. There you go. Yeah. Here's a note. Oh. Oh, yeah, everybody. You know what? Don't forget that Judge Million is coming in next hour. Oh, Hello. Love her. Marilyn Million from the People's Court. Yes. I told you at the top of the show that she's got a website. It's called Match. Or it's at Match.com. She does a relationship column. And um, she specializes in small claims on this in this relationship column as well as a domestic violence. So if you've got a question for Judge Marilyn Million, and we'll find out about her career. Look, she's a mother. She's uh, in her mid-40s. You know, she is great friends with Janice, Janet Reno. Rest of the story when she comes in. But um, if you've got a question for the judge, she'll be in next hour for advice hour for the judge. Hey. Wendy, man. My brother, he's 28 years old, has four children by four different women. This heifer called my mother yesterday. She's like, he got my sister pregnant. I want the money back for the abortion. The heifer showed up at my house with a receipt. Yo, did you catch this flashback? CC Pins is a legendary. She treats her band members well. Or it would probably be better to play a sound effect to show what you mean when you say that she treated her band members well back in the day. After a long performance. Okay. I had you taken a shower. Oh. She calls a meeting with her band members. <laughs> And tells them how professional they are. And she personally thanks them for doing a good job. Ray, all the drums, you were the man. Bring your six over here. Yes. Johnny on guitar. Oh, mm. all of you come over here now. Let me tune you up. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> well, that was back in the day, CC Pastor. Yeah. yeah. Early 90s. Wow. And don't forget Roslyn, the backup singer. What? Oh. What? Philadelphia told me everything. What? Rosalyn, let me put my face in your place. <laughs> oh my God. Cece was uh, with Rosalyn. Easy. Okay. Does Rosalyn know Cece personally in a biblical that sense? Was, that was her backup singer. She's from my hometown in Philly. Oh, Cece. She would come along the tour and tell her story. See, Cece, don't try to bring any fire over here because we will get Rosalyn on this yeah, phone in a Rosalind. minute. Got it. This is it right here. Miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. Everybody needs some. Should I leave? Like, is that selfish to my son? Come get some. Let me tell you, Wendy. It's really a trouble with a dude. Advice out. Advice I'm having a problem with my fiancé and his family. I was in a relationship with this girl for like 18 months. She told me the relationship meant nothing. Oh, oh. Always drama. Call Wendy right now. 1-866-GET-WENDY. Facts Wendy at 866-WENDY-FACTS. Wendy, can you give me advice on plastic surgery? Mm -hmm. Bring in the judge!
knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, she's from Queens, New York. When she was eight years old, her family moved with her to Miami. She's been presiding over the People's Court for eight, for excuse me, for five seasons. You look fabulous. Thank you. Judge is showing a bit of belly. It's flat. What a well-preserved <laughs> woman you are. Hi. Wow. It's nice to meet you. What do you mean well-preserved? Well, you know what? <laughs> that wasn't very nice. But you know what? There's something about when you get 40, people think that you're done. And and it is totally not that way. That's right. Have a seat, Judge. That's when I started. Judge, you're a hot tamale. <laughs> Thank you. Look at you. Is this the type I was of outfit? You'd say that. <laughs> yeah. Look, is this the type of outfit that you wear under your robe at the at the people's court? Sometimes I wear no no. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you know, so it's pretty wasted, unfortunately, because it's really just the robe and the collar that's all America really gets. Well, <laughs> so congratulations, your fifth season on the people's court. Yes. And um, the judge, everybody, lives in Miami with her husband, who happens to be a circuit court judge. Yes, and a hottie. And is he hot? Oh, yeah. Who does he look like who's, who who we can um, say from the same family as? Oh, I don't know. It's um, Dark small That guy from West Wing, who then was off West Wing and then had his own show in Vegas. What was it? It was it called Vegas or something. It was, it was like the doctor. What's that guy's name? I don't know. I don't know. When I first met him, I used to say he really looked like him, but it's been so many years, I just forgot. Is he? It'll, like, I'll, it'll come to is me. Is he Latino? No, he's a very white man from Buffalo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How did you guys meet? If you got a new whiter, he'd be translucent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we met at a bar, like I met every other guy I ever dated. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> listen, to, listen to the judge. And so get that whole internet dating thing. I mean, I think it's great and effective and fast, but I mean, I, I like to touch and smell and, you know. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> so kind you, of tippery. You guys have three daughters, three a nine-year-old, an eight-year-old, and a three-year-old. Yes. And um, your specialty, everybody, the judge's specialty is criminal, domestic violence, and she worked with Janice Reno. You worked with her for 10 with years. Janet Reno, I worked Janet. I was a prosecutor under Janet for 10 years before she became the attorney general. So if you weren't doing the people's court, could you have taken the ride with her? To well, actually, the, the ride with her would have been many years earlier, and wow. we, we talked about it and then I just I couldn't you know I don't know how much you know about Hispanics and Latinos in general but we're just like tied in the umbilical cord and family I just couldn't Two leave Miami up. I had yeah. the grandkids were there and the grandparents are both there and they were just yeah I didn't have that's why I don't live in New York now it'd be a lot easier for me to do the show if I lived in New York yeah well where does the show actually tape in here in New York down the block honey 37th and 5th so what's your schedule Monday through Friday and then the weekend I fly up Tuesday night and then I fly back Thursday night I tape all day Wednesday and all day Thursday yeah and, and, then and I do that 34 weeks a year so, so and you've been doing this for five years. Five years. So I was reading that um, that Judge Judy just redid her deal for. Boy, I, I have it somewhere in my pile of papers. And don't, I, I don't want. Listen, I don't want to lose my even, lunch. You don't, don't even want to hear. I don't want to hear what she's you making. Don't even want to, but you know what? <laughs> Here it is. Hundred and twenty-five million dollars. Yeah, that looks a lot like my salary, only not, you know. <laughs> and I'll tell you what it is. They, they say one hundred twenty-five million dollars. Judge Judy just got um, her annual salary will be between thirty and thirty-five million dollars. Isn't that something? God bless her. And she's sixty-three. God bless her. Plus, she did. Um, let me see. How for how long is this? Oh, four years. Another four years. Another four years. Yeah. You know, I thought she'd get tired, you know? I'm yeah. waiting for her to get tired. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I want that bigger share. You know? So we're going to go to the telephone because it's advice hour, and I love Excellent. that you're here during Excellent. advice hour. And everybody, the judge also has Hello? a column on Match.com. Ma it's a relationship column on Match.com. Okay, where you give advice pertaining to what aspect They'll of relationships. Give, you know, people will write in with, you know, a particular problem, like an incompatibility between a couple. Right. You know, like somebody's, uh, you know, public display of affection, somebody's really touchy and the other person is uncomfortable with it, and they'll just, they'll have like different scenarios and how would I rule on it if it was a court case. So okay. It's sort of a fun kind of little column. Yeah. Thing. Well, all right, talk to the judge. 866-GET-WENDY. Go ahead. Hello? Hello? Hi, talk to the judge. Hi. Hi. I didn't know I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing? Good, how you doing? Fine. Good on the floor, lay your show. Hello? <sighs> She said she loves your show, then she hung up. Hello? Yeah, I have a, Hi. I have a, the I have judge a question? Is on. Okay, go ahead. Um, I wanted to ask Judge Million. I've been, I TiVo you, and I've been TiVoing you since you've been, um, since I got my um, TiVo box. But to make a long story short, I was wondering, I get the impression that you are a little bit more prejudiced towards Spanish people um, when there's a case going against 
African Americans. And I don't know if you recognize it or not. Excuse me, this is advice hour, though. Well, I thought you said it was a question. Yes, no. Go ahead, I'll answer that question. Okay. You must not watch very much. Oh, yes, I do. Well, and when I watch not. it, I recognize and that you are. If you thought that was true, American. you would stop watching. You said stop watching. <laughs> I said if you thought it was true, you should stop watching. I know you're wrong. No, and you're I'm still not. Well, watching. like I said, um, if you, I, I don't know if you have anyone reviewing your tapes. But if you go back to your last season... I was there. I don't need to review well, your the last season, <laughs> there, you are very biased towards African Americans. And I've, I've actually okay. sat there and watched it with all the friends of mine. They watched it and, and automatically knew how the case was going to go. Okay. Thank you for your opinion. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> Judge, they give their opinions all day long. And we love There's that. There's no that's, shortage of that. Yeah, that's what we do here on the show. Um, but as I, you always say, he's still watching. Yes, exactly. Right. Still yep. And you're still listening. <laughs> thank you. Um, who else is on the phone? Hello? Yeah, what's good, Wendy? What's good, Judge? Hi, how you doing? Everything is gravy. Yeah, I got a couple. I got a couple questions. Um, first question: Are you related to Christina Million? I am not. No, you're not. You're not related to her. No, I'm not. That was a good one, though. Next. <laughs> and my my second question is: um, Are you looking for like any uh, court officers and stuff? Because you know, oh, I'm trying to you. Save, you know. Have you seen my court officer? Nah, but he I'm is sure fine. Douglas is fine. <laughs> okay, I gotta go. All right, let's look. I have some faxes right here just to get it right. Oh, shout out to Kat. Yes, Kat. It's absolutely true. All right, dear judge, I have a question. I moved to Dallas, uh, excuse me, from Dallas to New Jersey to continue a long distance relationship that was going on for a while, about two years. The relationship has recently become very abusive. Already pressed the button. And I've had, a, I've had to call the police a few times. I've not gotten a restraining order, but I will when we split. I want to stay in the apartment that we have because my son is now enrolled in school in the area. The question, number one, will he be made to leave if we're both on the lease? And number two, is he still responsible to pay half of the rent because his name is on the lease? I can't afford to pay this rent on my own. That's from Candy. That is that is a very complicated question. And, you know, the answer really isn't, she shouldn't be worrying. Look, Candy, you should not be worrying about who's going to make the bills later. You should be worrying about your safety and your child's safety. Okay? If you go out and you get a restraining order, one of the tenets of the restraining order is probably going to be for him to leave the apartment. That's right. And what you should do is you should meet in advance with your landlord to try to figure out what it is that you can do to make ends meet That's right. during that time. And you'll probably get a sympathetic ear. Um, you know, if he, underst- if he sees the restraining order and sees that it's genuine, because he doesn't want that going on in his apartment or her apartment right. either. You know, so it, it, it behooves you to do what you got to do to protect yourself. And then, you know, we'll figure it out later how you're going to make ends meet. There's actually in the state of Florida, they're trying to pass a law to uh, let people out of their lease mm-hmm. when they get a restraining order, oh. um, which sounds great. You know, the problem is that that could obviously be abused a great deal, too. Right. So, you know, it's sort of a balancing act. OK, and we'll take another one. Dear Judge, I'm a married woman with two children. My husband and I own a home together. The past six years, our relationship has deteriorated. He doesn't support the family. I'm in the process of filing for legal legal separation and then divorce. We're in danger of losing our home because he doesn't pay the mortgage. I need to know how to get him to vacate the premises even though he is on the title of the home. I feel that I'm the victim of mental and emotional abuse. I can't afford an attorney and I need to know the legal rights I have because I would like to keep my home for me and my kids. Okay. If the two of you own a home, he has as much legal right to it as you do. Mm -hmm. If there is domestic violence going on in the house, that is a different story. What you have described to me in this question is probably not domestic violence. Mm -hmm. So what happens in every divorce case like this is that you're going to have to move, okay? You you can, you know, when you file for divorce, you can file for maintenance, and, and because the children are living there... He may, if he has the funds, the judge can order him to help you pay the mortgage in order to keep the family there. But right. if you can't squeeze water out of a rock, if he right. doesn't have it, if he has to pay for an apartment, all of a sudden the funds are depleted. Bad things happen, but you got to remember your home is not the brick building around you. It's right. what you have in your heart with your children. Right. And you can always pull out your kit of Bobby Brown makeup and draw some black and blues. Right, oh my judge? goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Wendy, hey judge. Crazy woman. <laughs> I have a ten, I have a ten year old son who I've been the sole provider for for his entire life. The father is a sperm donor and has never provided for him financially or emotionally. Oh. He's in the rears of child support for the amount of thirty five thousand dollars and still counting. I've been in and out of the court system for support and he never shows up to the hearing. A warrant has been issued. Finally, he will be MIA for almost five years. How can I get? 
what I'm owed for my child. You're never going to get it from anybody but him. Yeah. So this would be a great time to invest in what can be a girl's best friend, which is a private, private detective. Yes, yes, find the yes, guy. I always <laughs> tell people that. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So get yourself a PI. Now, are we on board, everybody, with the type of questions that we're taking for the judge? Not do you need a bailiff or, you know, how do we get uh, to be a part of the show? As a matter of fact, we can give the show website because uh, people would like to come probably and sit in the audience. Peopleshow.com. I love court shows. Oh, thank I do. You. you love um, my court show. And I love your court okay. show. Yes, yes. Oh, absolutely. Uh, All right. So let's, um, hello. Hi. Hi. Okay. You're on the phone with Judge Million of the People's Court. I have a quick question. Okay. So, when you go for, um, I had a case where my husband, he went to court and um, his ex-wife quit, his, quit her job before she uh, went to case. So, it made it look like she was making no money. No. Right. And um, he ended up, he, he is paying five and change every two weeks for one child. Right. How right. can we go about... Adjusting that. Yeah, this, this is a really big problem that is very prevalent in child support cases where, you know, somebody will work, but they're taking money under the table, so it's not declared income. Well, now she's working, but I feel that when we go back to court, she'll do the same. Well, mm -hmm. but, you know, the key in every court case is evidence. So if you know she's working, what you need to do is get the evidence, whether you hire a private detective or you go out there yourself and take pictures or video of her coming in and out of wherever she's working, or you get witnesses, a couple of, of, of people who will make good witnesses to go into the business to see her working. But the key to winning any court case, and, and no judge wants to think that they've been bamboozled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would be great evidence for him to take in if she can is they always go? Can they always go back? Yes. Like to know that if I could get her... There is Yes, the answer to that is yes. There's oh, you can always go back to a judge if there is a change in circumstances. Can so, he get the money back that she well, if basically he prove, scammed? If he can prove that she was working at the time, if the judge feels that this was all a big scam and she was in fact working at the time, then yes, that's something that he might be able to get back. But that's going to depend on on your judge and the kind of evidence you're able to collect and present. And they take pictures and yeah, stuff pictures, like that get as witnesses evidence. have people come in, in in and out of the business so that they can see her there on a, not just one day but you know like maybe every Wednesday of every week so that it's a pattern that you can establish for the judge. So I can go to regular court and do this because when we went to court, it just didn't seem like the no, judge wanted it's to really, hear that. No, it, it really should be the judge that ordered the child the the uh, um, the rise in the child support. It, that's the judge who needs to redo that order. Don't don't take it to a different court. Okay, thank you for okay, calling, thank you. Judge. By the way, how do people? Be come uh, get to the, to the to the audience there in your courtroom. Oh, they just got to call the ticket line. What is this? Do you, do you know what? I don't know. I can't believe I don't know the, the number of my ticket line. It's on the website. People's Court Ticket. There's someone who's going to beat me with a bat when I get back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll know it in a minute. <laughs> Look, you're a smart cookie judge. You, you're, you're one of these women. You've got it all. You've got a fantastic career. You've built a TV career on top of that in your chosen profession. You're managing three kids, a husband, back and forth commuting, you're, you're a beautiful woman. Thank you. You really I'm represent. <laughs> Latinas, stand up. This is your queen. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, clap it up. Clap, clap, clap it up. Judge Millian, thank you so much for coming in. We only got like 30 seconds left on the break, so I want to make this all about you. It's the fifth season of The People's Court. Go to the website and find out where it comes on in your community because, you know, we're syndicated so we're every place. Right. But um, you already know. You've been watching for years, everyone, right? Okay, great. Judge, thank you so much for coming in. Oh, my pleasure. Beautiful. Oh, and check out our column on Match.com. But most importantly, watch The People's Court. Judge Marilyn Millian, everybody. Love this. It's windy, man. You never met me. You don't know me. You ain't been in my house. You don't live with me. You don't sleep with me. You don't do shit with me, but talk about me. Why can't you say? That's all, baby girl. That's all I'm asking you is why can't the f you say? The Wendy Williams Experience. Are you feeling overworked or feeling like you need a little TLC? Is it time for a manicure, a pedicure, or how about a treatment for stressed out hair? You know, the JCPenney Salon is offering $10 off their services for first-time clients. Take time for yourself and visit one of their stylists at the JCPenney Salon and save $10 on any treatment of $30 or more. JCPenney stylists are trained in the latest looks and are experts in every aspect of hair color. So take a break and get a break of $10 off at the JCPenney Salon right inside your JCPenney JC Penny store. Your life, your hair, JC Penny Salons. 107.5 WBLS, where the listening is fun and the winning is easy. You just won yourself a thousand dollars! Oh my gosh! <laughs> 
$1,000 winners throughout the day. Set your radio wake up and get paid. You got $1,000. $1,000 free money. I'm that serious. <laughs> Each morning at 7.15, 12.15, and then again at 5.15. Congratulations. Quincy. Oh, I love you. You just picked up $1,000. You don't know how much I need it. It's the $107,000 cash guarantee. What's the baddest station you ever heard of right here? 107.5. WBLS. WBLS FM. Yeah. Good morning, guys. I'm still entertaining the judge. Judge is a publicist and and who else? I'm the audience coordinator for People's Court. Hi. <laughs> Nice to meet you, sir. Hi, publicist. You're a publicist? Yes, I am. Nice to. Oh, no, it's thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm the makeup artist. Hi. Hi. You are a friend in my head. Sam, you're a beautiful. <laughs> I'm loving. Shout out to my daughter, Natasha Murphy. Uh, the shout out to Natasha Murphy. You know what? So often women dye the gray out. You look beautiful. And Natasha has a crush on Artie. <laughs> Uh-uh. Oh, it is. No, but she loves him through the radio. She has no idea what he looks like. Yeah. Say how you doing. Give him, and spread your bottom lip so they can see. Natasha? Yeah. Natasha. <laughs> Natasha, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And here's the telephone number if you want to be in the audience of the People's Court. It's 888-780-8587. 7808587. Thank you so much for bringing Judge Thank Marilyn so by. And I you can have her anytime. What a fly behind we the scenes she's got going. Wow. We know we know Joe. That, I see. <laughs> I see. Right. Bye you all. I'll see you all around. All right. Because we're friends with the judge now. Oh God. Did he embarrass us? Gay no. Steve, what did you no. say to Judge Million? Yeah, uh-huh. Her. Oh, I said it's nice to meet you, Your Honor. Oh, oh, oh yes, yes, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> Bye, ladies. Thank you. Welcome. I love that Judge Millian. I'm loving all those court shows, but Judge Millian, and I still said this before. I love the Judge Millian because there's something really ultra sassy about him. Yeah, Judge Millian is sassy. And I said this before. I love the Judge Millian because there's something really ultra sassy about her. And I like that she's a woman and she's a minority, and so she knows, you know, assuming, you know, that she knows all different sides of the the, the landscape, you know, of um, economics as well as, um, you know, situations. Yeah. Who wants to win something? Call the number ten on the telephone, and then we're going to answer the phone pertaining to advice. But right now, I've got a Doctor Miracles brand new thermocutical intensive no lie relaxer leave-in system. Softens your hair, keeps it shiny, and ready for styling. You can get it free, so why not dial up right now and you'll win. All right, okay. Um, Dear Wendy, I love the article in New York Magazine. I love the picture. Don't stress over it, though. It is what it is. If anything, blame it on the retouchers. <laughs> also, I thought a perfect new last name for you is Uggams, as in Wendy Uggams. That's from Sanafa. Uggams. No, that. Mm-mm. Uggams. Mm-mm. I like Wellington. Wendy Wellington or Wendy Carrington. I'd like to stay with Hunter, actually. Um, shout out to some get a little entertainment. I like them. Isn't that a good name? Some get a little L I L. Some get a little entertainment. Mm-hmm. They're doing um an after party for the comedy experience on the twenty eighth. That would be next week at Club Amazora. So check that out. Sometimes people fall out of the comedy experience and they're and they're uh, ready to go to a party. So I'm, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm not just checking it out. I'm hosting it. There you go. <laughs> there's a lot more expected of me if I say host. That's why I like to say check out. Because check out could mean, you know, there's Wendy over there, you know, with her drink. Right. If I say I'm hosting it, then it's like, why does she get the hell? Why does she get up and do something? <laughs> you know, too much is expected. Right. I'll see you at Amazora next Wednesday yes. after the comedy experience. <laughs> By the way, they're doing the official after party of that Kanye West tour, too. Ooh. With Keisha Cole, DJ Self, a Club Deep. Yeah, you know, Common is not on that Kanye West tour anymore, but he didn't leave because they're fighting. He left because um, he got an acting role. Oh. Mm-hmm. Let's take the telephone calls because it's still advice hour. Now, remember, Judge Millian is gone, and we just gave away that no lie relaxer. So now this is a bad advice. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. 
Oh hi! I wanted to win something. I don't have a question. Oh yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yeah, we already got we already got the winner. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Oh, hi, I wanted to win. Something. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, we got the winner uh, behind the scenes. She's in the other room taking the information. All right. Never mind. We have to abort mission. Yeah. Just yeah. All right. All right. Well, Vaughn comes in at seven o'clock with the quiet storm. Advice hour continues next from the faxes and the phones here on the Wendy Williams Experience at one hundred seven point five WBLS. Yo, did you catch this flashback? It's Robert Smith, everybody. Brandy's ex-husband. So, you dated her for how long? Mm, I don't really remember. Like six months? Three months? It wasn't months? really your ordinary situation. Because mm. she got pregnant. Of course. And then you decided to marry her or there was pressure to marry? There was never a marriage. So, there was never a marriage. You guys, that, you were just playing that off to preserve her innocent image. Right. I actually had a girlfriend at the time. Oh, oh and you know you, Brandy was your jump off. Exactly. Oh, Robert, you scandalous hoe. You got it. This is it right here. <laughs> miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> It's Advice Hour, still on the Wendy Williams Experience. Our guest has left the building, Judge Marilyn Millian of the People's Court. And by the way, thank you guys so much for being helpful with who her husband looks like. The guy that she couldn't think of's name from the West Wing, Rob Lowe. Wow. Kids must be beautiful. The judge is a hot tomato. I mean, she had belly and 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 back. Like, like she had on like a... a she, and there was nothing, there was no muffin, nothing hanging over, nothing. Just hot chi-cha-cha. Mm-hmm. Coming up next hour um, is the Hour of Truth. We'll be gossiping our way through about Ice Cube. i got to tell you about Young Jeezy going to court. Beyonce, we'll talk about Little Fizz. We'll talk about Carmen Electra, Jason Blair, and Tia and Tamara Maori making news. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, I ripped this out of one of my magazines. They basically explain in two forms how to wear black. The right way and the wrong way. Now, you know, black is the new black. Black is back, stronger than ever. But you want to avoid the funeral look in, in your black. Much like when you wear white, you want to avoid looking like the ice cream woman or man. So, I forgot what magazine I ripped this out of, but it says, um, add a drop of color. That's the right way to wear your black. They go on to say, ever notice that a stage hand wears black to blend in. Avoid the similar fate by adding a bright accessory, like a white bag or, or something like that. Uh, the wrong way they say to wear black is uh, don't get swallowed up by wearing all black. Be sure to show some cleavage or some leg or some arms to break it up. I have an all black. Am I being swallowed? That's why I have my arms pushed up. Mm-hmm. I have an all black today. Oh, wow. Yeah, you asked me about the furry boots yes, yesterday. Yes. And even though it's only October 16th, I said... You know, art is right. It's my staple look. Yes. I put on my furry boots even though it's 70 degrees out. Oh, welcome back. (laughs) Do my feet sink? No, why don't they? I don't know. They're hot in there. No, they don't stink. Okay. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) Um, let's go to the telephone because it's still advice hour. I want to hear what you guys are talking about. Hello? Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Hey, Wendy. What's going on? Now the judge is gone. I know. Okay. Okay, um, Friday is my fifth wedding anniversary, mm-hmm. and I want to take my wife out to a great sushi restaurant. Do you have any in mind? No. Oh, you don't? And I'll tell you why. Um, if you turn your radio down, I'll tell you. Okay, hold on. Because sushi, okay. Is, sushi is something that we don't enjoy as a couple. He hates it, and I love it. So, therefore, it's something that I eat primarily when I'm here at the radio station. I eat it, and I order from this place. Goose, what is it called? Umi sushi. Umi sushi. Now, I order, first of all, I order a bunch of different food um, on any given day, but I partic- I don't like to see any of the places that I actually order from because I'm scared that they will look very unpleasing and I'll never mm-hmm. want to order again. Okay. So I don't recommend you necessarily eating at Umi sushi. Okay. Um, because, Goose, it's not laid out for a fifth anniversary, is it? I'm, I'm, I mean, sushi is not something you'd want to go out on a date with, you know? Yeah. Okay, wait. Here's I mean, Art, the man about nice, town. It's nice. <laughs> Go to Shima at 2nd and 10th for a celeb spotting. It's true. Okay. A lot of celeb spotting. A lot of celeb spotting, and it's good sushi there. Oh, okay. okay. 2nd Avenue at 10th. It's Shima. S-H-I-M-A. S-H-I-M-A. Yes, and happy wedding anniversary. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. It's Advice Hour. 
Yes, Wendy. Yes. Listen, I have a, I have, I need some advice. Mm. I'm my girlfriend. She recently just got married. Mm. Hello. Hello. You're, yes, keep talking. You're breaking up. Keep talking. She recently just got married, mm-hmm. right? And they moved out to Plainfield, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Keep talking. Okay, I'm mm-hmm. sorry. They moved it's, it's out okay. to Plainfield, New Jersey mm-hmm. now. She thinks her husband Uh-oh. is faithful to her. Okay. Now, he comes out to Newark like every other night. And he's creeping around with a man. Oh! Okay, okay, wait. Okay. Does Does his wife think this or is this you who thinks it? I know for a fact this is what's going on. Were you in the wedding? No. Okay. Recently, how recently did they get married? September. Okay. So it's not too late for her to get an annulment. You need to report this information. Normally, I would say stay out of grown people's business, but she needs to know this before they have children together. Do they have children? Yes. Oh, there we go. How many? One. Okay. Well, at least she can get away with, um, you know, no harm, no foul. We are divorced. It's only an emotional thing. She can't ask for um, uh, spousal support, perhaps, but she can get her child support. She doesn't want to continue having sex with him. Okay. But she used to be gay. Okay, well, then she knew what she was getting into because gay recognizes gay just like black (laughs) recognizes black. You know, the light-skinned, high, yellow black people could try to play white if they want and fool the white people. But white people, a black always knows a black. Just like I would imagine, um, Latino or Latina always knows Latino or Latina. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. Gay knows gay. Art, wouldn't you say? I'm sorry. All right. I'm sorry, Art. I get Steve here. Today. <laughs> Steve, come over to the mic. Gay Steve. He's one of our interns. Mm-hmm. Steve, generally speaking, does gay know gay? Yes, very easily. Okay. okay. Even, a, even a lesbian to a gay man. Okay. That gets a little difficult, but... I would think it'd be able to. Okay. Yeah. Then, then you need to uh, put her on. All right. You need to come with your evidence, though. All right. Hopefully that- she'll be listening. Yeah. Well, you want to say her name? No. Initials? Um, C. C what? I can't say anymore. Well, say how you do it. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Is she your ex-lover? No. Okay. I'm just asking because I thought maybe I you'd want... Said- Okay. All right. Everybody calm down. All right. Thank you for calling. Good luck with your situation. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. You're on the radio. We got like two minutes um, before advice hour is over. Oh. Hello. Damn you. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. We got like two minutes before advice hour is over. Uh, I want to um, ask Wendy for some advice. Yeah, here I am. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing good. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been dating a gay. I'm in a homo... Um, in a homosexual relationship. Okay. I've been dating this guy for about a year and three months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, we were living together, and recently he moved out. Mm-hmm. Um, now, he says he's faithful. He says he still loves me. He wants to be with me. Like, in the beginning of the relationship, I was mad controlling. Okay. And then, like, I realized my faults after a while, and, like... I was ready to let it go, but then I realized how much I really love him. Okay. And, like, I'm trying to make him happy now. And, like, he wants me to move somewhere I never wanted to move, but I'm willing to because I want to be with him. You feel me? Okay. Like, I love him to death. Okay. But, um, it's hard because, like... You'll eventually resent, by the way, moving someplace that... And I don't care whether you're married for 50 years or dating for 50 seconds. You will eventually resent him because he's he's having you move someplace you don't want to move. So if that's your question to me, the answer is don't move. And I thank you for being here. Unfortunately, Advice Hour is now over, and the Hour of Truth starts next. But really, I take advice during the whole show. It's just this break is over. Wendy, man. I met up with this guy. We were together we were at his house, and why do you think his thing wouldn't work? Do you think maybe he's... How you doing? The Wendy... Today's R&B and classic soul, 107.5 WBLS. Broadcasting live, it's the queen of radio, Wendy. Wendy. Wendy Williams. Oh. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. Kurt Franklin? Oh, no. Legendary, right? Okay. Well... He, they say he may be a minister and he might be a happily married father of four and 
uh, what he wants you to know, according to a blog at his website. Um, is that how you say that? The computer yeah, talk? Yes, yes. All right. Yes. Literally, <laughs> a blog at his website. Um, he was addicted to pornography. Yes. Um, he says that he talks frankly about it um, and has no problem with it. His wife is a former... Yeah. He talks about it, yeah. His wife is a former stripper? Yeah. Well, then she shouldn't be um, shocked? Yeah, no. Mm. I, well, I guess she's not shocked, but this is what his quote is. Um, I guess it's just my makeup. That's just something that I am. I'm just very vocal about stuff. My weaknesses are something that God just presses upon me to discuss. And I'm comfortable talking about it. So, I'm addicted to porn. Are you going to tell the rest of the story, or do we have to? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> tell the rest of the story, Artie. Of? Uh, of Kurt uh, Franklin. Uh, of course. How, 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 how you doing? All right. Ooh, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I like how he presses his own laugh track. <laughs> T.I. says he is not leaving. And uh, Excuse me. Yeah, T.I. is saying that he's not leaving boys in the hood. Now, the word is, is that young G's, he only had a one CD deal with boys in the hood. And so he is no longer with them. But T.I. says he is not leaving. Uh, the word has been circulating. Um, and this is what T.I. says. Although I am and have always been part of the movement, I am not a member of the group. Excuse me. He is not a member of the group. It's young Jeezy who is leaving. Oh, I just get very confused. Boys to men? Du Bois? Boys? <laughs> no. T.I.'s not a member of the group. And Young G's um, is gone from the group, just so that you know. Are you familiar with Boys in the Hood? Yes. Great okay. CD. I just wanted you to be, be aware. I never thought T.I. was a member of that group. Where, um, where did that come from? Anyway, Young Jeezy is going to uh, court. You'll never believe why. Because I know rappers get a bad stereotype that they're always in trouble and whatnot. You know, and I know about the yams at his auntie's house. But no, you know, he's a successful rapper now. He's making his money and, and he's turned his life around. His real name is Jay Jenkins. And Jeezy is currently under a review as the mother of his child, Nicole Dykes is stating that since the original child support motion in 2001, his income has changed drastically. No. So you see, she's going in. Yeah. yeah. Well, originally, the motion back in 2001 was set at $178 a month. Since that motion, Jeezy's a household name, thanks to many, including the experience. Multi-platinum. Let's get it. Thug Motivation 101. That's the CD. So now, are you ready to find out what she's asking oh. for? Ms. Dykes <laughs> is, <laughs> is asking for more than $20,000 in expenses, including clothing, transportation, and housing to care for their child. For what? Per month. Oh, my God. Yes. Killing it. He could have probably paid that back in 2001 with all them yams at his auntie's house. <laughs> but, however, you know, at their last courtroom appearance, however, uh, which was held on October 6th, the judge declared that um, an adjustment would definitely be made and that both sides would be responsible for their own court fees and lawyers. In the meantime... Both parties returned to court on October 26th. So, I guess that is typical rapper drama in court, but not in the way in which it usually is, which is even though the rapper's making money, he's not paying. It's not that he's not paying this mere pittance. I mean, this is the, the Newport bill per month, $178. Um, and I went through it too. Yeah. LL went through it. Yeah. He went through it briefly, a child. Before he was married. Yes. Oh, okay. Then he decided, why pay it? I just marry her. There you go. There you go. She knows all my secrets anyway. Yeah. 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 Mm. Do you think they live their lives, you know, kind of like the um, the Smiths, LL and so on? Mm. 
Mm-mm. Hell no. No, LL is not not mature enough to understand that. No. Mm-mm. Is that maturity or is that... More like the Jordans. <laughs> kind of like separate. Yeah. Separate and, and the wife better not be talk, uh, flaunting. Well, they both do their own things. Why need it? Mike do their own thing. Mm-mm, I don't think... Mm-mm, I don't see LL and Simone being like that. I see him doing his thing and she better be tending to the kids. Oh, you're right. Yeah. And if there's anything any differently... I'm going to knock you out. No, 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 no. If, he, if there's anything any differently, then he gets mad and maybe he'll he'll leave the house. And then, um, oh, well, hell, I don't know. I just don't see them living like Juanita and, and um, mm-mm. and definitely not as open as the Smiths. No. All right, let's move on. I don't care about the Olsons versus the Hiltons, do you? No, let's move on. Tia and Tamara Maori are both involved in committed relationships. Well, it's Tia, who's with this actor named Corey Hardrick, H-A-R-D-R-I-C-T, Hardrick. He is a guest star or a guest spot actor on things like ER and CSI. They said he's on Cold Case sometimes. Tamara is not talking about who she's involved with, but Tia, you know, is the voice of one of the characters for the Bratz animated cartoon. She also, Tia, appears on Lifetime Strong Medicine. Well, they're about to work together for the first time in many years. There's something coming on the Disney Channel called Twitch, Twitches, and they're going to be um, part of that. They're both 27, and they both hold psychology degrees from Pepperdine University. Of course, you remember them from the the um, early 90s show, Sister, Sister. Mm-hmm. 27 now. My how time passes. Pepperdine. Yeah. Pepper, that, what did I say? You know what I'm saying? That's where, what's the name? Went? My Tootie. Tootie. Jordan and Tootie. Yeah. 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 Eva Langoria, excuse me, Eva Pickford, um, America's Next Top Model, who's 20. She's now engaged to Henry Simmons of, um, what is that, NYPD Blue. He's 36, she's 20. And she's sporting a five-carat diamond ring. They met at a fashion show. She was working the catwalk, blah, blah, blah. I've run into him before on the red carpet. He seemed to have the personality of drying paint, so he should be pretty easy to beat into submission. You know what I mean? They say Eva's intelligent and she's very business minded and and she's very deeply in love with him. Good for them. I wish them luck. Beyonce Knowles on Vanity Fair. Skin lightening job. I don't know. You know, I don't know that they digitally lighten the skin, but I do believe that publications will make the lighting on the set so that your skin, they don't have to go through the computer thing. You know, they they make the lighting on the set so that your skin appears to be a lot lighter. Like she's the shade of Jennifer Lopez on the cover of the new November Vanity Fair. If you walk by fast enough, you would think it was a white woman. And um, now the editor of the magazine, as well as the people who work there, make decisions are under fire. The editor's name is um, Graydon uh, Carter. And Vanity, I mean, um, Beyonce is the first black woman to appear on the cover of Vanity Fair since 1993. Tina Turner was the last one. See, I don't purchase Vanity Fair magazine unless there's something special going on. Like, I wanted to read the Beyonce article. And then I got it from you, Art. You got it. And you gave it to me. And so, I don't know. I just don't... mm. Anyway, um, now... It was a few years ago that they did have, uh, in the late 90s, they did have a bunch of black men on the cover. But that was a bunch of black men. Michael Jordan, Will Smith, and Chris Rock. A bunch of black men. But besides that, and then the Tina Turner, and then now Beyonce, three times in the life of the magazine. So there's a pronounced dip in newsstand sales of Vanity Fair magazine. That was recorded and reported earlier this year. So, um... The, the people in charge of Vanity Fair were convinced it was because of a, a series of gloomy covers. So they decided to lighten everything up from skin complexion, I guess, as well as, you know, the background. Like, if you notice the one of the van- that um, Beyonce's on, everything on it is, is white. And it also happens to be the 2005 music uh, issue. Hip hop is spelled in big, big words. Okay. So, you know, they're trying to make up to the black people, um, I guess, and people in general. Oprah's looking light these days on her show as well. Everybody's getting lighter. Hmm. 
Well, you know what? They didn't lighten up the picture where Beyonce is standing with Jay-Z inside Vanity Fair. And so it looks like Beyonce is posing with Alec Wack. I mean, by comparison. Yeah. This is the comparison that was actually made by um, an inside source at Vanity Fair. Listen to the quote. All the photos of Beyonce have been made to look so white that Jay-Z literally looks like Alec Weck standing next to her. So then he had to be lightened up, too. So everybody's lightened up. <laughs> everybody's lightened up. And Vanity Fair is outraged by the claims that they manipulated the photography. Hey, Essence, stop looking so screwy. You all are known for lightening up, too. Don't think it's just the white people that do it. I've seen what goes on on the cover of Essence magazine. People be lightening up. Mm -hmm. I saw a picture of Beyonce on Glamour magazine, and I see, it looks like she had on blue contacts in the whole bit. They're guilty of doing the same thing. Well, it is what it is. Let's go to the phone see what people are saying. Hello? Hey. Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Turn your radio down, though, okay? Oh, 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 it is you. Oh, my God. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing, Wendy? Good. That's good. You know, I've been trying to get through to you for years. Oh, my God. I can't believe I'm really talking to you. Here we go. She out of here. My, my niece got you, you got a from you at, at that, that furniture store. What that furniture store you talking about? And she Oh, yeah. Yeah, my niece, she, 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 she waited till you came out of the Gucci store, you and your son, and she walked up to you. Her name is Dee Dee, and she got an autograph, and you autographed her Junebug. Oh, I remember that. This is Junebug. Yeah. Yeah, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Y'all look just fine. But listen, I wanted to comment about that Pat LaBelle and uh, Usher and the way he just deserted her, Beyonce, and Beyonce. Now, Beyonce ain't had nothing in years. So he should have been an honor and a privilege for him to even be at her uh, function. No, these people deserted because they wanted to stay on the good side of L.A. Reid, their boss. That is so tacky. Well. That is so tacky. I know Patty is so hurt. Exactly. I her. And you know she's legendary. Yeah, I know. You just the don't kids love her. Yeah, you just don't do that to very few people do you give a pass to. And one of those people is Patty LaBelle. Exactly. I mean how exactly. much money could she possibly you know, listen to you talking about um Kirk Franklin and Dick Turk Pono did they, they didn't say male or female pono though. No, they didn't say that about the pono. Oh no they didn't mm -hmm. so I think it, I think it's male pono myself. I think he's a tasty cake. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well thank I, Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's you, my phone. Don't worry about that. I ain't, I ain't answering that. Oh, shit. it's okay. I gotta, I gotta roll off. Huh? I gotta roll off the phone. Okay, thank you, uh, Wendy. Bye, June Bug. Bye. Yeah, because he was um, breaking up and stuff. By the way, Jude Law and Sienna Miller. I told you their relationship's over. Okay, Marilyn Manson um, talked to Women's Wear Daily magazine and said that he's in talks with a major cosmetic company about launching his own fragrance later on in the year. It should be called Death Becomes Him. No. <laughs> And, um, you guys, we're going to take it to a break, okay? When we come back, we'll talk about uh, Carmen Electra, a little fizz, Ice Cube. I would love to take your calls on uh, Beyonce on the cover of Vanity Fair. And, and you know. It's windy, man. You're so hot. you The Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS with the return of the $107,000 cash guarantee. Backed by popular demand, it's your chance to pick up an easy grand. $1,000 winners throughout the day. This is your man, Steve Harvey. I know you want to get some of them bills off your back. Set your radio to wake up and get paid on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And listen for Steve to give you the cue to call in to win each morning at 7.15 a.m. So get ready at your shot at winning one thousand dollars cash we're gonna get it to you just like that flip 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 then listen for steve again at 12 15 and then again at 5 15 be the 10th caller and you're an instant winner cut it fold it up put it in your pocket it make a nice little hump in there put a rubber band on it make everybody think you're born it's a one hundred and seven thousand dollar cash guarantee on 107.5 wbls today's r&b and classic soul okay and the wendy williams experience until uh, seven o'clock I love when I can refer you guys to great people who do great stuff. I love doing that. I love being like a little consumer um, 
in with the gossip and the advice. You know, if I can be your go-to person for some things, you know, like furniture or huge shoes or whatever. And listen to this that I got from um, Nadia, who lives in the Bronx. Dear Wendy, I just want to thank you for introducing me to um, a caterer by the name of Shawnee. You introduced me via her website. You gave the address on your radio show. My wedding is scheduled for New Year's Eve 2006, and I absolutely had no idea who would be doing the catering. One day I was listening to your show, and I heard you raving about Shawnee. To make a long story short, I met up with her and her fabulous mom, and I fell in love. This woman is the epitome of creativity and sweet, too. I saw pictures of some of her fabulous creations, and her work is to die for. Thank you so much, Wendy. I have no doubt that my day will be 100 hundred times more special because Ms. Shawnee's involved. I'll keep you posted. Oh, that's great. Go to ShawneeCaterer.com. S-H-A-W-N-E-E. ShawneeCaterer.com. She catered our Radiothon. And she's brought fruit into, food into us before. She's catered stuff for Hillary Rodham Clinton. She's catered stuff for um, Rita Ewing. I mean, she is, <clears throat> I think it was Rita Ewing. Anyway, some NBA. She's catered a lot of NBA things. Her food is scrumptious, and she takes the most basic stuff and makes it delicious. So, ShawneeCaterer.com. S-H-A-W-N-E-E. She's the one who gave us the brilliant idea that a perfect invitation for a baby shower is a onesie. Onesies are so cheap, and they're just, to me, they're absolutely perfect. You know, you roll them up real nice. You get ribbon, and you tie the ribbon around. If it's a boy, you know, the, yes. Caterbyshawnee.com. I'm sorry. Caterbyshawnee.com. Caterbyshawnee.com. Caterbyshawnee at AOL.com. Oh, well, you know, this is just all. You know what? <laughs> Figure it out AOL. yourselves. Caterbyshawnee at AOL.com. Are you sure? Uh-huh. All right. Thanks. Did you run back here? Yes. I see. From you, the bathroom. Yeah, no, I see you're trying to hold it in, but your, your nostrils are giving it away. Oh. You know how you try to hold it in, everybody, but your nostrils are... Oh. <laughs> all that time in the gym and I'm still... <laughs> <laughs> Gotta give up that four blunt a day habit. <laughs> I'm only playing. Uh, all right, cater by Shawnee at AOL.com. All this blogging, it's just too much for me. Why can't somebody just call somebody these days? You know, what the hell, you people, all your impersonal talk. See, like she does. She's coming around. A blogging. Whatever. She's coming around. <laughs> what is a blog? That's when you go on and you Google somebody? This is like a lot of information about a person. Oh. When you blog me, what do you get? Do you get anything? Am I bloggable? Yeah, I'm sure you are. Your books and everything, your radio show and your TV yeah, show. Yeah, but I never paid uh, a fee. You don't have to pay a fee. It's just about you. About facts about you. You're bloggable. Are you bloggable? No, I don't think I'm bloggable. Blog you and see what happens. <laughs> blog you. See what happens. All right, I'll blog me. No, really do it. Get off the porn site. Really do it. <laughs> blog you. I lie. He's not on a porn site. He's actually on a site full of his pictures, and he's staring at himself. Wow, you're vain. Listen, I got to talk to you about L.A. weight loss. 1-800-448-TRIM. It's 1-800-448-TRIM. Fabulous. Worth it. Affordable. Conveniently located. 600 locations. It's got to be one near you, your in-laws, your work. No pills. They don't force you to go to the gym. They don't laugh at you if... You know, you stumble. They don't laugh at you if you go into your L.A. weight loss counselor or call and you're crying because chances are your L.A. weight loss counselor has been where you are right now. My girl, when I was on L.A. weight loss, she'd lost 80 pounds. So she was she was more than sympathetic to, you know, my my phone calls. How much weight do you want to lose? LA weight loss is affordable. Listen, it's a toll free call. Call and find out. They will cater your weight loss program specifically to you. Yes, my dear. There's no food group off limits. Okay. Are you? I'm bloggable. Yeah, you're bloggable. But it's funny when I did myself, it had all. I this, mean, you're bloggable. Well, it has Sir Arthur, some other Arthur Evans's, but then you're on the bottom, like VH1 shows. You're like you're on the same yeah. page as me for some yeah. reason. They've and, linked us together yeah. in the blog world. In Google. Yeah. In Google. Yeah, in Google Land. All yes. right, well, what do they yeah. say about you in Google Land? No, it's yeah. not me. It's just like Sir Arthur J. Evans and some other, you know, other people, archives in Wales and other countries or whatever. Not me, but other people with the same name. Okay. But then downstairs to see results for Wendy Williams, VH1.com, cover story, the queen of dish. And then it has the transsexual porn star, Wendy Williams. Oh, well, let's look at her. Oh, we've seen her before. She's hot. 
Do we look alike? Is that why she chose the name, or she was invented before me? No, no, no. There, there. Oh, she's right there. Oh. See, she's the trans. I don't want her carrying my name, like Pat, like um, Tyra Banks. Let's try to change her life. Well, she's probably a listener. <laughs> Let's try to change her life. Let's get her a job and stuff, like Tyra did with Tyra Banks. Change her name to Wendy Uggams. Yes, she is. Oh, she's white. And not very attractive in that picture. I wonder where she lives. Block her. Maybe she'll come up they instead of me. Probably LA where they all live at. Hmm. Over there in Canoga Park mm -hmm. in the valley. That's okay. I'm Wendy Wellington anyway. 1 800 448 Trim. It's um, LA Weight Loss, everyone. 1 800 448 T R I M. And um, that's it for L.A. Weight Loss. Hey, Stanford, Connecticut. Don't forget Saturday, the place to be is Cafe Bahia. It's 320 Greenwich Avenue in Connecticut. It's an adult nightclub. Bob Lee is hosting the WBLS live broadcast. And the place to be once again is Cafe Bahia. <clears throat> oh, let's go to the telephone. Let's see what people are talking about. It's 866 get Wendy. Who sent all these condoms? Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Ooh. Trojan, that kind of called me this morning. What is this? this? Yeah. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? All right. You hear that? I'm on yeah. your website. Oh, I, my website talks? You know Give that? me that hand you buzzer. Or... You got on no, I mean, I don't know how to um get on. I got to learn about you that. Line it up first. You I love you for listening. What? Oh, oh, okay. There's my website. All right. So what are you calling about, sir? I'm just calling to a girl. What's popping with y'all up there? Oh, okay. Well, you know, we just got a big bucket of things from Trojan. There's all kinds of stuff vibrating and... Well, y'all got a big bucket of things from Trojan? Yeah. Yo, why don't you bust that down and show some love? I mean... I, 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 I want to be safe. What you got, son? I mean... <laughs> all right, so look, we got to get off the phone. All right, Wendy, love you. I appreciate you calling. Love you, too. All right, bye-bye. Oh, when I go to the phone, I really go for specifics as opposed to, you know, just like the general, hey, how you doing? I'm glad to talk to you, you know. Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Hello? Hello, is this Wendy? Yeah, this is me. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Fine, just want to tell you I love your show. Thank you. Yep, I love it, love it, love it. Thank you. Okay. All right, bye-bye. All right. I'll give those away tomorrow night at the comedy show. Perfect, okay. Yes. Everybody, everybody that comes to Laugh Factory tomorrow night, you're eligible to grab because we got a big bucket full of stuff from Trojan, including um, the rings that vibrate. Look. Yes, vibrating rings. Vibrating rings, condoms, the whole bit. We love the people at Trojan. Thank you very much. We'll bring them there tomorrow night. Steve Harvey's going to be in the place to be tomorrow night, too, at the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience at the Laugh Factory. Hello. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Oh, lovely. Thank you. I've been trying to call you for about three weeks. I need uh, an opinion on an office etiquette matter. Okay. I went to the bathroom uh, a couple weeks ago. My office building is not just our building. There's other businesses in it. But our bathroom is in a private area. Mm -hmm. so I went to the bathroom. And as I go into the stall, mm -hmm. I hear someone having a conversation on the oh. cell phone. Uh-oh. Yeah, exactly. I like my privacy. Oh, um, okay. So I'm a little unsettled by this. Yeah. I go in, I close the door, and I'm doing what you quietly do in the bathroom. And this conversation is occurring a couple of stalls over. And finally, I hear the person say, wait a minute, and they flush. Okay. So they continue their conversation, and now I'm really feeling uncomfortable, but now I'm done, right. mostly because I just want to get out of there. Right. And I flush, and then I hear a voice say, no, that wasn't me. Mind your business. Now, is it me, or was this a little over the line? <sighs> they said to the person on the phone, it wasn't me. Mind your business. But I mean, they, my, what I'm doing in the bathroom is now the subject of someone else's cell phone conversation. Well, no. I mean, they didn't mention you by name or anything like that. Well, they that. didn't know who I was, but it's kind of creepy, isn't it? No. You don't think so? No, but I, like you, I prefer to be in the bathroom by myself just for my own reasons. Yeah. I find that, you know, my stream is a lot steadier when I'm by company. myself. Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, it happens. It happens. you got to time out your bathrooms. I guess. Yeah. All righty. I mean, there was, she, the, the, she didn't do anything wrong, but neither did you. Okay. Yeah, I know what you mean, though. Kind of creep me out. Yeah. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. I find that I can't, you know, like, um, there, there's some things I just can't do in the bathroom when I know other people are in there, if you know what I'm saying, after a big meal, and I think you do. I'll just wait until I get home. How do you turn this damn thing off? 
Yeah. Is it going to vibrate the entire show? No, no, no. It's still on. All right, look. It's the Wendy Williams experience. We're here till 7 on WBLS. Yo, did you catch this flashback? Wendy Williams and Mary J. Blige. I was tired of living the lie, living up to what everybody believes and thought I was. And I was actually living up to a bad girl image, a drug addict image, a person that needs friends so bad image. And no, I'm not a holy roller. And yes, I'm going to mention God and I'm going to bring him everywhere I go. Yeah. But I still wear jeans. I still wear tight jeans. I still love my people. Yes. And I'm not some... Like corn, you know. I mean, I'm, right. I'm the realest Thank I've God. ever been in my Thank life. God. Yes, yes, you know? yes. So if you don't want to be around me because you think right. that you're gonna be feel convicted, don't feel convicted right. because I'm not God. I'm just telling you where I stand right now. Right. And if you can't respect that, then I can't have you around. Me. We got him. This is it right here. <laughs> miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> Well, at some events, I guess it can be a bit constricting, um, but the NBA has introduced a new dress code. Are you all up on this? Um, first of all, there will be no more dress down days in the NBA. The league has announced through a memo to the team yesterday, Monday, that a minimum dress code will go into effect starting November 1st. Players will be expected to wear business casual attire whenever they participate in team or league activities, including arriving to games, leaving games, making promotional appearances and the such. Poor Allen Iverson. Well, yeah, he's going to have to buy a suit or something or league attire, you know. Well, they say that if the NBA wants to change their image, they're going to have to change the dress code. They're going to have to, you know, make it more more palatable for people to um, not see them as bad boys. A lot of that is has to do with the way Allen Iverson and others, you know, go out, which while there might be no- nothing wrong with it, the NBA now has a bad name of being a league full of high paid bad boys in some cases. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'd like to talk to some of the guys. Who told you Beyonce's having a baby? Who was that that just called? I'm not sure. Somebody on the hotline. Well, exactly. You, you can't necessarily believe that. I mean, right. I understand that. I, you know, I've heard that buzz. I heard, I've heard that buzz for quite a few weeks now. But I don't, I'm not running with that. I mean, if she is, great. Congratulations, Beyonce. Congratulations, Jay-Z or whoever. Um, no, I'm just playing. Congratulations, Jay. So that would be what? Baby number two for you? Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations, both of you, if it's true. I didn't run with this story because I don't know anything about it being true. It's, it's very easy to be said. Anyway, I'd like to talk about the NBA dress code. So let's go to the phone. I'd like to hear from some basketball nistas. Please, no people like me calling because, you know, we don't really have much of an opinion on this. Hello? Hi. Hi. How are you? Fine, and you? Do you have an opinion on the NBA dress code? I think it's very good that they need to do that. Yeah. Um, Promotional appearances. I mean, you know, if they're they're going to be appearing at the local, um, you know, slop shop, signing autographs and stuff, do you really think that they, they look better in dressed down casual clothes, not two-piece velours? No, they need to be in suits and ties the way it should be. Hmm. They're going out to do work. That's what they that's what they do. Hmm. Okay. And I also called to let you know that Beyonce is pregnant and it was on Good, uh, Good Morning America yesterday. Well, that's believable. Hmm. Well, then congratulations to her. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Nice talking to you, you Wendy. Too. You're doing a very good job. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. I'm not. I'm still not running with it. I mean, like people. People have an easier time believing Good Morning America as Hello. opposed to the Star Magazine. But um, after having you know worked and and fed information to some of these shows, one is not like they're not more reliable than the Experience. Who's not more reliable than the Daily News? Who's not more reliable than the L.A. Times or Entertainment or Extra? We all feed off of each other, so I don't know that to be um, true. So you know, hi, it's Wendy. Hello. What are your thoughts on that NBA dress code? Hello. Oh. Okay, hi, it's Wendy. Hey, hey, Wendy, how you doing? How are you, sir? All right, are you still talking about the NBA attire? Yeah, I just wanted to find out from somebody who's really in the know with the with the ball players and stuff. 
Well, I got to be honest with you. I think they should be wearing suits. As a matter of fact, up mm. until you said it, I didn't know that they weren't wearing suits. Mm. You know? Mm. They should be doing it all the time. Mm. Mm. They're giving a bad image to it. Yeah. Listen, I wanted to say something about that um, Tranny Wendy Williams. Okay. We've been trying to get her to change her name for a while. We? We. There's a <laughs> website called HungAngels.com, and um, mm. she's on that frequently. <laughs> Mm. And it's just getting to the point where we're just disgusted with it. Everybody that's in the tri-state area is like, come on, every time you come to New York, we tell you to change your name. What's going on? Well, why yada, do you tell yada, her to yada. change her name? Because it's my name? Yeah, basically. Mm. And, I mean, you sound like such a nice, normal man. You say we, like you're a part of HungAngels.com. Like, is this Mr. Marcus? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm a moderator on the site. Oh, you're a moderator? Fact, there's a bunch of people from the site listening right now because they all called me and they were oh. like, well, if you get through, go ahead and talk about it. Well, next time she comes to New York, let's have her up here. Maybe we can, you know, help her get her reacclimated with, you know, society at large like Tyra Banks did with the Tyra Banks porn star. We're trying to get her to stay out of New York, Wendy. I mean, come on. <laughs> You've seen the pictures. Yeah, but I, I mean, I'm not offended. If it brings more attention to the to, to the bigger pr picture, then uh, you know, I'm not I'm not upset about that. Okay, baby, I love your show. Been oh. listening to you for a minute. I so, appreciate that. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Take care. It's just that if that Wendy Williams ever kills herself, you know what I mean. I just hope nobody calls my parents like they did when Wendy O. Williams from the Plasmatics was found dead. Oh. People call my parents three o'clock in the morning. Oh, so sorry to hear about Wendy. Ringing my phone at the same time. I was in Philly at the time. Wendy, is this you? You're answering the phone. I was like, yes, and I'm also getting ready to go to the morning show. And I used to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Why? Well, they're reporting on the news you're dead. What? You mean Wendy O. Williams from the Plasmatics? Because I grew up in Ocean Township, so I was familiar with the Plasmatics. And I immediately guessed that. I was like, oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Anyway, um, hello. Hey, Wendy. Hi. How are you doing today? Good. That's good. I'm just calling about the uh, dress code in, in in the NBA. Sure. Yeah, I really, I really think it, it's it's a good deal because they're making so many millions of dollars, and they can buy a couple of suits. Yeah. You know, because what happens? They are role models, and and the kids look up to them. Yeah. You know, and coming out to signing, you know, autographs and everything like that, and, and some of them don't even sign autographs. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, like I said, hey, if they got to travel with suits back and forth to these different cities, yeah. why not? It's perception, right? If a couple of them got no suits, they can come to my house and get a suit. <laughs> you know, I, I don't make as much money as they do, but, you know, hey, come on now. Yeah. Thank so, you, uh, sir. Okay, love. You have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. <laughs> All right, you guys. Your phone calls are greatly appreciated. By the way, the new people poll question on the Wendy Williams Experience dot com. Do you brush after your meal? After every meal is, is what Art said. Do you? Yes or no? You can hey. go to the website. Wendy, man. Now, my question is about the kegel. Why is it every time I try to do them, I have an orgasm? Is that normal? No, but it must be pleasurable. The Wendy Williams Experience. <laughs> Down the NYC. Listen, Wendy. Yes? I think you have to put on that recording of your saying that word. I think it's necessary. Fire! Daddy! <laughs> <laughs> we love that, Wendy. Come on, fire. It's Wendy, man. The Wendy Williams Experience. I have I'm never, never been so much in love, love before. What a difference. Oh, wow. Our true love made in my life. <laughs> Um, you, you know that one. Yes! I love that yeah. What do we have as much wait, more wait, wait, than this? The Source magazine is launching a new magazine focusing on the Latino culture, everyone. And, well, excuse me, Art, there's that reggaeton music um, that is very popular. Jennifer Lopez? 
Fat, Fat Joe? Well, no, I mean, I'm thinking that, uh, <laughs> why, why can't we all just get along the Rodney King? Just keep it as it is. Yes. Why separate? Mm-hmm. Just keep it together. I kind of feel that way, too. Like, like, well, like well, why can't everything just be the same source? Because what you're going to do is you're going to water down your product. The Latino magazine is not going to last for a long time. I don't know. I mean, I, I would love to take phone calls for people who, um, you know, read the Source magazine. I'm a Source magazine reader. I, I like to see everything in one. That's like having a source for wiggers. You know what I mean? Which, you know, why would you do that? Why, why would you have a source for wiggers? Hello? Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Oh, by the way, and Loon is interested in signing um, Little Fizz, formerly of B2K, who? to his label. Loon's label is called Boss Up Entertainment. Yeah. So, uh, sir, what are you calling about? I'm calling to see what you're talking about today. Okay, well, um, turn up your radio and, and hang up the phone, and, and I'll be there. Excuse me? Turn up your radio and, and hang up the phone. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Because right. to me, you guys, correct me if I'm wrong, the phone is about two-way conversation. You know, to find out what's going on in the show, you listen to the show. To participate, that's why we just spent this money for the eight-second delay. So I can just pick up the phone at the drop of a dime. Every radio station already has it. But here, um, you know, it took us a while uh, to get this. Hello, hi. Hello. Okay. Um, I was asking about the uh, Latino Source magazine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I really don't think it's a, it's a hot look for the Source at all. No, that's what no. I'm thinking. No, I mean, uh, first of all, a lot of Latinos are black anyhow. So why we, you know, I mean, it depends on the company that they're in. Yeah, because there yeah, are a lot of Latinos black. who play black when they're by black, and play white when they're at white around white people. <laughs> yeah, they try to front like there's a lot of Dominicans that are bl- blacker than the the blackest black dude. Oh, well, that's true too. That, that, yeah, that's true too. So I don't think it's a good look. It separates things, you know. So I, I say, you know, the, the hip hop culture has always been black and Latino people, you know. From the hood, creating music and creating mm. culture. So yeah. why, why, you know, watch up it. Yeah. Anything else you want to add to the conversation before we uh, get off the phone? No, nah, but yo, I thought Boss Up. I thought that was uh, that Prez had Boss Up label. Boss Up, that's Loon's label. Oh, okay, okay, bye bye. And so he's interested in signing Little Fizz. That means nothing to anybody. Exactly, uh, Loon. <laughs> right. Yeah. Thank you for that's calling, sir. Take, take care, Wendy. Bye bye. Um, and Sylvester Stallone, everybody, is going to jump in the ring with Roy Jones Jr. to get him up to fighting weight for Rocky 7. Whoa. I think it's actually Rocky to Rocky 6. Rocky 14. Right, yeah, whatever. Um, Sly is 59 and blah, blah, blah. And Adrian is dead, by the way, in the new Rocky. Adrian is dead. Mm-hmm. So anyway, let's see who else is talking. Do you remember Jason Blair? Hi, who's this? He's the brother who was fired from the New York Times for fabricating articles. And, um, well, now he's um, an editor at Phoenix Books. Do you know Jason Blair? You remember this big story that came out? Hi, who's on the phone? Hi, I'm, I'm calling to speak to Wendy. Yes, it's me. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, I'm doing well. I yeah. just, I wanted to ask you two really quick questions. Okay. When is the next Wendy Williams is on fire is coming on on VH1? Um, yeah, I I don't know. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> well, I hope to see it again. If there, if the powers that be of each one is listening, a lot of people have been asking about it, and we would love to see that again back on television. It's the best thing on the H1. Oh, so. Well, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I have one quick question. Another one quick question. Mm-hmm. I'm about to take the punch with Diamondique, and I've heard you mention it once or twice, and I just want to know... Should I purchase something with Diamondique? Does it really look like diamonds? I absolutely say you should purchase Diamondique. Really? How does it look, though? Mm-mm. To to the layman's eyes, like diamonds. Really? And I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you. And when you see me, don't scrutinize nothing, because my husband hates that I even slum to watch it, and he buys me and makes sure that oh, I've only bought one piece of my own jewelry, and that's my right hand ring, and I went all out, and I'm I'm a right hand now, like I'm a ring collector, but my favorite one is this flower one that you'll see me wearing all the time, even mm-hmm. if I'm digging in ditches. Mm-hmm. You know, with like Target clothes on, I I got my right hand ring because the right hand is me and the left hand is we, and that's the way that is. But prior to becoming, um, b- prior to 
getting in a serious and committed relationship, I was all about my diamond ache. Honey, please. And people don't know. And you know what I do? I'm still addicted to it. During Desperate Housewives, because you know it comes on 9 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Diamond Eek is on QVC on Sunday nights at 9 o'clock. Absolutely. Too. That's when I watch it. I am back and forth between the two. Whenever he comes in, he's like, why are you looking at that junk? Why? And I'm like, because. Because. Because I'm, you know, I'm ordering Christmas gifts. Mm-hmm. Or because I just like to look. Like, I just like to look. So I should go Yes. Yes. Okay. And you know what? If you want to take a preview of Dominique is not actually showing on QVC, but you're interested, go to QVC.com. Okay, I will. Thank you so much. Yes. And I hope to see you on TV soon. Oh, well, thank you very much. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yes, I don't mind saying that one damn bit. You know, fake it till you make it. And even after you make it, you want to know what? People don't know the difference. A, a, a scrutinizing eye, like I now have learned the difference. Um, but people, people don't by and large know the difference. They don't know what the hell you're doing. You know, they, they assess, you know, how you're, how you're made up, what your job is, and they just assume it's either fake or it's real or whatever, whatever, whatever. And it's not necessarily the way it is. And girls, Dominique rocks. It rocks. Hello? Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Good. How are you? Nice to have you here. Am I calling number what? No, it's not time yet. Oh. Yeah, no, give us a few more minutes. You're calling in New York. You're waiting for your share of the $100,000 cash carry. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Do I have to dial again? Yes, you do. Okay. Okay. Bye. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. So, Jason Blair... Um, who um, was the black man fired from the New York Times um, a little while ago for fabricating the stories about um, just lies, just, you know, article after article. So he had a job as a book editor over at... What are you guys toasting? What is that? Green tea. Green tea. Green tea. And being a part of the most successful radio show in history. Yeah, Yeah, but you guys toast like, 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 uh, like Will and Jack. (laughs) You toast the queen tea? She criticizes everything. (laughs) Why, you want some tea? Want me to get you some tea? No, thank you. <laughs> you heat it up in that rotten microwave of ours. We talked about that earlier. According to the New York Post, he was editing a book called The Karastic Conspiracy. It's a thriller about terrorism and whatnot. And the actual author's name is Julie uh, Christine. And so, apparently, this is what Julie says. I thought I'd give Jason a break and let him edit my book. He phoned bright and early and he seemed conscientious. I was impressed. Besides, this was fiction, which is something for which he clearly has a talent. Then one night around midnight, the guy called. I felt something was a little off. He said he wanted to review my contract to save me. He said, uh, excuse me, I told him I have lawyers and I have agents. And he said, uh, excuse me, and I told him I'm in good hands. Thanks. Well, he persisted, and I dodged. And he said, from now on, you have to run everything by... Sounds like one of them binges, y'all. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of them late night... Oh, I remember them well. Calling and all out of sorts. Wendy, what are you doing calling at 4 o'clock in the morning asking about Tide? Um, um, I couldn't sleep. I'm trying to wash clothes. <laughs> calling somebody asking about a damn contract at midnight. <laughs> anyway, so look. So so um, he said, from now on, you have to run everything by me. You have to look out. I'll protect you. He then went on to trash the people that I was involved with. He goes on to say, trashing whoever had been good to me um, and good to him and given him a chance. He became an angry young man. He was in North Carolina. I was in Arizona, and he wanted me to meet him in Texas. Oh! I said I wasn't ready. He said then he'd fly to me the next day. Oh. I said I'm on a 45-day deadline, Jason. This is a waste of time. I'll email you and we'll meet later on. By now, my head was spinning, she goes on to say. He wanted to be my ghostwriter. I thought he was kidding. Then he said, lie. Tell everyone you met with me. Well, this Julie woman, the author of the book, says that she hasn't heard from Jason Blair since then, and she doesn't want to. The book is scheduled um, to be released in January of 2006. It was actually supposed to be scheduled to be released this month, but you know, October, but uh, they put off. Isn't that crazy? I'm telling you, you all, from me to you, you know, you get those crazy calls. 
at an unsavory hour. And yeah, midnight is not unsavory for my girlfriend, Lisa Carnegie, to call. But, you know, for a book editor or... Oh, hell yeah. Mid- midnight is unsavory for Lisa to call. She doesn't call like that. I'm not a single woman anymore. Do you know what I mean? The bed, the, the, the phone's ringing on the nightstand and stuff like that. The point is, is that tip off number one, unsavory hour phone calls. Yes. Depending on your lifestyle. Art, if I were to call you at two o'clock in the morning. You have. Oh, never mind. I have. <laughs> I have. Well, then I'll finish the rest of the statement. Was I interrupting anything? Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, then my next question is, what were you doing up that late? Offending? Something something very unsavory. Oh. <laughs> something for which you needed a shower afterwards. There you go. <laughs> and a hose. Oh. Fuck. <laughs> what? Ah. <laughs> Woo. 50 Cent and Young Buck are doing good things. They've um, started a new, actually two new educational grants. The first one is going to the Nashville Alliance for Public Education. It's going to help fund um, a determined individual to further their education. It's designed to increase students' academic performance. And then the other one is called teach for america and it's going to be it's going to be worth one hundred thousand dollars and it's going to be used to assist a student or two actually they don't say how many students but the one hundred thousand dollars for students who have become victims of hurricane katrina and i think that's great the grants are distributed through g unity foundation so just when you think rappers have no heart um you know and i know what you're saying cynical and with the tax write-off, it's this, it's that. Yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. And, and, and at the end of the day, it's still a good thing. So, oh, hell, it wasn't you saying that. That was me talking in the other side of my head. <laughs> Only doing it for a tax write-off. They say that Carmen Electra is pregnant. I'm not running with this either, just like I'm not running with Beyonce. I mean, if it's true, great. If it's not, you know what I mean? Says, they say that, though, that, um, see, I, unlike Jay-Z and Beyonce, because I haven't heard they've been trying for years, you know, they haven't, you know, gotten married. Not to say that's the only reason that you have children, you know, I'm not saying that. But for Carmen and Dave, they've been married for a couple of years now. And a lot of times people don't give you a chance to be with each other as a, like a married couple. They just expect you to get pregnant right away. And so people have been wondering from the time they got married, like, when are you going to have kids? When are you going to have kids? When are you going to have kids? So they, they say she's pregnant. I, I, I have no idea. Every time she puts on a, a peasant top, look, here's a picture of her in a peasant top. She doesn't look pregnant, but, you know, the peasant top is like the tip-off, too, as they call it in the tabloids, the bump. Ugh, whatever. All right, um, everyone, keep it where you got it. Wendy, man. You can go on the stand, Steve, but the point is, keep your mouth shut. Anybody from the streets know that. Never talk on nobody. The Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS, where the listening is fun and the winning is easy. You just won yourself a thousand dollars. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Thousand dollar winners throughout the day. Set your radio to wake up and get paid. You got a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars, free money. I'm that serious. Each morning at 7:15, 12:15, and then again at 5:15. Congratulations, Wendy. Oh, I love you. You just picked up one thousand dollars. You don't know how much I need it. It's the $107,000 cash guarantee. What's the baddest station you ever heard of right here? 107.5 WBLS. WBLS That is your man Steve Harvey in the mornings. Come and get this money, y'all. We got it for you cash. Be caller number 10 at 212-545-1075. $1,000 right here from 107.5 WBLS. Wow. All right. And here we go to the phone. Hello, you're calling number one. Hi, WBLS. You're calling number two and you're calling number three. You're calling number four. Calling number five. We got Tidra Moses in the other room. You're calling Hello? number six. She'll be coming in as soon as we get our winner. You're calling number seven. Hey, you're calling number eight, BLS. You're calling number nine. How you doing? 
boy. WBLS, you're calling number 10. Congratulations. Hello. Yes, you just picked up your share of our $107,000 cash guarantee. You got $1,000. Thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Woo! Oh, my God. You're shocked into submission, aren't you? Yes, I am. Who's does your mommy? it sound like it? <laughs> yes, it does. You must also be at work, huh? Yes, exactly. Some place where you can't while out. Exactly. Well, it's a thousand bucks. Hey, it's and better than nothing. That's what I'm saying. And, and on, all you have to do is listen and win. What's your name? Allison. Where are you calling from, Allison? I'm calling from Brooklyn. Okay. I always ask people this. It, it's the standard question, but we like to know what you're going to do with the money. Oh, my kids are going to have a ball. I'm going to take them shopping. Good. That's a nice thing. All right, Allison. Well, we're going to put you on hold and take all your information behind the scenes. Thank you so much for listening and let everybody know your radio station with the $107,000 cash guarantee. 107.5 WBLS. All right, everybody. Your next chance to win the big money, $1,000. Um, $1,000. That's our $107,000 cash guarantee. We spread the love by giving away $1,000. Not once, but a few times a day, okay? Um, 7.15 tomorrow morning is your next chance to win with the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Don't forget, Steve's going to be at the Laugh Factory tomorrow night. How you doing? I look forward to seeing him there. Art, are you going to tell stand Are you going to do jokes in front of Steve Harvey? Why not? He'll probably get there early because he has to go to bed early for his morning show. Right, exactly. So he, might, he might just catch me. Are you going to do a full-blown routine? I'm going to do it for the people that come every week. Yes, he's going to happen to be there. I'm not doing it just for him. I'm doing it for our regular devoted listeners. Yeah, but I thought maybe there are kinks in your comedy act that you would like to work out. Maybe you could ask him on the side. Oh, I asked him that anyway. Like, when I come in in the morning, I asked yeah. him. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I got something special for him, though. Oh, okay. I've been thinking about it. What kind of joke are you going to tell? Well, you know, I figured I want to expand my repertoire to more physical type of comedy. So, I'm going to get a little louder, more depth comedy jamish tomorrow instead of my usual laid back style. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going just, to just go for it tomorrow. I'm going to go for broke. Okay. Yeah, I might jump in somebody's audience in the lap or something. I e might do some crazy. Easy. Okay. The way I predict it, you're over 30 now. I mean, I don't know for a fact, but, you know. What does it have to do with the comedy club? The Pratt Falls. Ask, ask the late, great Jack Tripper. Oh. Pratt Falls turned him out. Your hero, Prince. Them high heels and them splits. Yeah, but they probably never went to a gym regularly and worked out. Madonna? Madonna. She didn't work out either. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. Yes, she does. Oh. She's a specimen. Oh. You just be careful with them pratfalls. If everything is working right now, if you wake up in the morning and all your joints are working, I wouldn't suggest you falling in the front row. Well, uh, okay, you're right, you're right. I, yeah. just, I stay on the carpet on stage. <laughs> the carpet's kind of thin. Okay. Be careful up there. Okay. <laughs> all right, well, uh, Laugh Factory tomorrow night. Artie's got something special planned as usual. Shout out to Capone, the Gangster Comedy. Of course, I'll be there. The Negroidian Buffet, the drinks, Ken Black, and Steve Harvey. Yes. We'll be in the audience. We're not promising any jokes. Let's bring Tidra Moses in. Yes. Tidra, by the way, um, was has writing credits including Christina Milian's um, Dip It Lou Ooh. and Trina featuring um, Kelly Rollins. Here we go. That's good. That's hot. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Again. Again. Yes. And um, you also helped Tiara Marie with um, Get Up On You. Get Up On You Gangsta. Okay. Did you write the whole song? Mm-hmm. And your current single, you which you're not me. singing on, but that you have credits on? No. Are you actually singing with um, I'm singing Pitbull on that one. And That's me. Scrappy? Yeah. That is you singing. That's me. That would be me. And so now here you are breaking out for the first time. This is your first CD? Yeah, it's my first CD, but I'm moving into the next one. This is just a single, like, leading me into the next one. What is a single? This this current you one? You better tell her. <gasps> well, well, I haven't seen the video. Were you in the video and everything? I didn't do a video with you. I'm just asking. <laughs> okay, so then, I'm, so then I am up on it. Listen, I've heard the song. I had no idea it was you on there. But, um, and I also haven't seen the video, so there's no video for no, it. No, not yet. Are they going to do a video? We're going to, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, so Tidra's here, and your CD is called Complex Simplicity. Exactly. And you're still working on it? No, I'm done with it. Done one. with it. When does it come out? It came out already. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed that. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's really good, though. It's okay. It's know? okay. So All right. So yeah. when did it come out? It came out uh, last year. Last year. Oh, damn. 
Okay. Uh-huh. Like August. Damn. <laughs> how, how late are we? It's been, but it's, it's okay. It's, it's okay. been 15 months. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tears. But it's you want to okay. know what? The interesting thing is that you've been making your money and you've been doing it. Then. Apparently, you're a very talented woman. Yes. Girl, I, I don't sweat it. As long as I can write for other people and I can still make exactly. my music, I'm happy. Yeah. Did you hear about Beyonce taking credit for Crazy Love in the Vanity Fair article and the man who actually wrote it died over the summer? So that oh. she can go on and take that credit and nobody oh. will ever jump up. He did she, He did not just the words, but the musical arrangement and everything. And in Vanity Fair magazine, they have her down as the writer and like she's nodding and co-signing. Oh. Yeah, it happens. It does. I'm sure, you know, when you don't mind because you make the money, so you let people take the credit. It's okay because you, okay. you make money. So kind of like Dolly done. Parton with Whitney Houston doing I Will Always Love You. Right. Dolly, That's Dolly's song. That's Dolly's song. Yeah. You can sing it anytime you want to. Anywhere you go, you can sing it for free. Right. It's yours. Yeah. Dolly Parton. Okay. <laughs> so where are you from originally? I'm Tedra from Moses, New Orleans. everybody. From New Orleans. Oh. oh. <laughs> How did, is everybody okay? Everyone is okay. Everyone is really good. Okay. You know, a lot of people, I have to look at the positive side of this thing because I have friends and family that have called me from Houston and Cincinnati and then they're living much better lives, yeah. you know, because poor is really poor in New Orleans. It's um. not like poor, it's like you're poor. You know what I mean? Yeah. And people have, lives been changed. So you have to look at the positive side of that. Okay. You know, I feel bad for people that lost everything. Of course, I've sent my money and my prayers and everything, you know, yeah. but some people's lives have been changed, you know. For some, the better. For the better. Yeah, for the better. So. That's a way of turning lemons into I lemonade. I try to look at things. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. I try. Do you feel guilty because you're here and you weren't there with your family? No, <clears throat> mm-hmm. I don't. I don't. Things happen, you know. Where your mom and dad and those people? My mom and dad aren't alive. Okay. But my dad just missed it. He just. <laughs> Hey, Wendy. It's okay, girl. I'm, we are just okay. hitting on zero with this interview. The album's been out for 15 months. Your parents are gone. Your city yeah. is gone. No. My city's gone. But I'm, sm- I'm still here smiling. <laughs> Go, Tedra. Go. Damn you. Do you have a website? Yes, tedramoses.com. Do we spell your name T-E-E-D-R-A-M-O-S-E-S? I'm the Gordian. You all, please go to this woman's website please because... Yes. Damn you. <laughs> so what is your background? You, you're Creole and... and black girl. A black girl from Just New black Orleans. black girl from okay. New Orleans, yeah. Do you have any kids? Yes, I have twin boys. We talked about this the last time. What Was I forgot. drinking? No, you weren't drinking. No. It's okay. No. When did we talk about it? How old are they? What were, was, the that, mic, was the microphone on? The mic was on. Yeah. Well, different and, audience. Right, exactly. <laughs> People come and go every damn day. <laughs> I'm sorry, Damn. All right, so your boys are how old? They're nine. They're nine. Mm -hmm. Baby's father? Baby's dad ain't around. Oh. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) But that's all right because mommy holding it down. Okay, okay. I told you I got a positive flip on everything. Yeah, you do. Does he pay you child support? We working on it. Oh! You are just a mess. Damn. You know what? Put this woman on our radar. We're going to help this woman. No matter how long you've been singing. I've been singing only for about four years. Wow. Yeah, that's my. this is my first, you know, Complex and Pussy was my first album. And, it, you know, I got I got a core fan base cracking. But more than anything, I wrote some hits. So yes, okay. you worked the hit songs. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. I and just told somebody the other day. That, that, ability ability for, that ability for writing will take you into your 40s, 50s, and yeah, 70s. There's no age limit on it. So you don't have to be out here to compete. And you don't have to make albums of you know gimmicks. You can go and make what you really want to make because yes. you're not hard-pressed for money. Yes. You know? Isn't that you fabulous? Still living. It's fabulous. I wouldn't trade it for the world. So where do you call home now? I live in Los Angeles and I live in Miami. Okay. Mm-hmm. You live in I Los go back and forth. Okay. Well, look at that. She's balling out of control. Not really. Oh. But I make it look like it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so where, where are the boys? Where are the twin boys? The boys in L.A. The boys are in L.A. L.A. Yeah, we have, you know, because, uh, you know, when you start doing a little something, family comes to live with you. Yes. You can't avoid it. Yes. So they help out. That's their position. Okay. They so, help out so they're the hired kids. help. Yeah, for room and board. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, has family ever stolen from you? No, never. They already know. Okay. They already know. No, you you be, don't play you've been through too much. All right. They already know. They really do. 
And so who's all in Miami? Is that where your man is? That's just, I don't have a man, but I'm working on it oh. in Miami. No, don't owe me okay. because I'm really good by myself. This freedom is nice. You know? well, when's the last time you had sex? Oh, I, I make sure that happens. Oh. But I don't have a man. Oh. I'm okay, though. Do you need some condoms? Trojan sent us a whole bucket. Please give me some. Oh! <laughs> Go, girl. Why, why are these already open? <laughs> Someone has stolen out of my pack. <laughs> Give me oh, a clue. This is just a vibrating ring. Is that the you want a vibrating ring? I want one of those too. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Put that where I go. <laughs> all right. The CD has been in stores for 15 months. You all, please it's go and get it. Complex simplicity. Go get it. Don't feel sorry. The for new her. one. The new one is coming. The young lioness. That's really what I want you to. The know. young lioness. The young lioness is coming. I'm working on that right now. Excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you can go to her website at Tedra. T e e d r a Moses. dot com. That's correct. Yes. We're gonna remember, and we're. You know what? <laughs> Don't cry for her, Argentina. <laughs> That's Teacher Moses, yes. That's and right. she will prevail. That's right. <laughs> nice to see so you nice again. To see you too, Wendy. Thank you. All right, everybody, keep it here because the bonus bye bye. hour is coming up at the top of the hour, and we're here until seven o'clock. It's the hey. Wendy Williams Experience on WBLS. <laughs> hey, this is Persia White. What's up? This is Rolanda Watts. This is Rachel True, Mona from Half and Half, and you are listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. <laughs> Oh, boy. So, Carney Wilson, everybody, um, who successfully delivered her um, child uh, many months ago, as a matter of fact, um, she's a mere shadow of the weight that she was before gastric bypass. She used to weigh 311 pounds, and she was a size 28. Now she is maintaining her size six. She eats lots of veggies, and she's 37 years old. She's still successfully married, and... Um, she has a cookbook out, which is the purpose of this story, if you'd like to know. It's called To Serve With Love, Simple, Scrumptious Meals from the Skinny to the Sinful. It's 14 bucks. You can go to Amazon.com and pick it up. And, uh, you know, I like Corny. She's uh, my annoying friend in my head. Just seems like too much talking, too much giggling, too much, too, you know, too, you know, but, but I like her. I like her. And um, she's got a cookbook at, and that's what I wanted to share with you. All kinds of delicious recipes. If you're a recipe follower, you know. Um, <clears throat> Jamie Foxx got into a fight. Almost. A man grabbed his breast. Oh. Now, if you're like me, you're saying, what man refers to his pecs as a breast? <laughs> but not Jamie Foxx, which is why I'm wondering yes, why he would... Yes. The man has new basketball games at his crib. Please. He has new basketball games with his boys at his crib. Yes. Right. Turn off the music, Gus. You know, we're very quick to paint with a broad stroke here on the show. And I d never... And it's not because I think he's so ultra fine that I don't want to believe or anything like that. <clears throat> Is that the buzz? In you all circle? In our circle, <laughs> he does have new best way. He said it. In the I movie. know that. Yes, but how do you know that the girls aren't there cheering them on? Girls don't play basketball like that. They're with his boys on the sidelines, new cheerleaders. See, Gosh. don't try to put everybody in the ambiguous category with you. Basketball is a contact sport these days. If you knew what other guys, you touching something. <laughs> yeah. Something is swinging somebody's way when they checking for a ball or something. Trying to play defense. <laughs> defense was tight. Defense was tight. <laughs> well, this is what Jamie says. Okay. Actor Jamie Foxx got into a fight with a fan at a nightclub recently after the man grabbed his breast. Oh! Foxx was partying with friends when he was suddenly approached and touched by a man. Oh. Foxx says, here's Jamie's quote. Are you ready? This guy walks up to me. He says, hey, Jamie. What's up, man? I say, chilling. Then he grabs my breast. I don't know what he was thinking. We got at it, and it was quick, and I didn't even get to hit once. Oh. I mean, I don't really much care, Jamie Foxx, you know, one way or the other, but I've just never heard that before. Ice Cube apparently went to an Oakland Raiders game last week, and he was mobbed by a gang of fans. They so much cube, cube, cube that the Raiders actually thought they were being booed. Just a little Ice Cube news.
I love Ice Cube. <clears throat> um, what else do I want to talk with you about? Oh, Tony Perkins is leaving Good Morning America. You know the the um, light skinned black man with the um, curly hair and the glasses, and he does the weather. He's leaving. To return to Washington, he will work at a Fox affiliate in Washington. Um, his last day of Good Morning America will be on December 2nd. And then he will be the weatherman beginning January 3rd at WTTG in Washington, D.C. He said um, he announced his departure from the morning show in an email to Good Morning America staffers. Um, here's his quote. I worked for... The channel in D.C. for over seven years before coming to Good Morning America and the chance to once again be a part of that family was too good to pass up. Not to mention the fact that he's married and he has a son. So you don't know what kind of personal turmoil has jumped off. I mean, up in the relationship, him spending, you know, all this damn time in in New York taping Good Morning. Splabu, you better get back here quick before... I take half. I mean, that's a scenario in my crazy mind because I'm crazy, but I wish him well. I'm not, you know, the big GMA watcher. I know who Tony Perkins is, though. I prefer Mike Woods. Mike Woods. He does the local um, weather here on the Fox 5 Morning News. Mm -hmm. New York. Donnell Jones is returning to the music scene after three years. He's, um... What are you, looking for me for a cue? Yes. Well, okay, if I wasn't here, what would you do? <laughs> he, and the rest of the uh, uh, statement is, will be a guest on the show later oh, this all week. All right, Donnell, my <laughs> <See>? man. <laughs> He's going to be a guest on the show later this week. I like Donnell Jones a whole lot. Because my my love is curious and serious. I believe in blowing up spots. Yes. Remember the great left eye in the white yes. outfit walking down the hallway in the diva walk and then blowing up spots and then she blows up her hands. Oh, um, so what, so what, so what? Yes. Mm -hmm. I like Donnell Jones a lot. You know, he's from Chicago. So uh, he's been off the scene, though, in three years. He'll be back. And he's coming up to the show and whatnot. It's going to be a lot of fun. What else did I want to leave you with? Mary J. Blige is going to receive the legend honors, the Vibe Legend Honor at this year's Vibe Award, which is going to be taped on November 12th. I guess they've lifted that question mark as to whether or not they were going to do it thanks to, you know, all the backstage mayhem that went on last year. but um, And then it's going to be broadcast three days later on November 15th on UPN. So that's the Vibe Awards. Look for Mary J. Blige. I'm sure she'll be looking stunning. And um, she's going to get the Vibe Legend Award. Congratulations, Mary. I'm attempting to leave you all on a high note today. So we're going to talk about Tony Braxton and Chingy and Ludacris and Sean Paul because they are up for American Music Awards. That's scheduled to air on TV November 2nd on ABC. Um, I guess we can pick up where, where... Oh, by the way, Cedric the Entertainer is hosting this year's American Music Awards. I can't decide whether I like that fit or not, but why not? I... <sighs> My verdict is still out. And if you have to deliberate on something that long, then isn't your initial thought what it is? Love you for being here. Gotta go. Bye. Please pardon me, boy. <laughs> See you later. Because I'm saying bye-bye. Good night. Program complete. <laughs> Look, I like Cedric the Entertainer and stuff. But I think he's hosting the American Music Awards. I don't he's not even musical. Well, neither is Ryan Seacrest. But if they didn't get Seti to do it, then they'd be making room for somebody like Ryan Seacrest. So, you know, better Cedric than Ryan. I'm going to go get a fistful of candy from Ramona's office. And then I'm going to come back. We're going to do the bonus hour. Among other things that I wanted to talk with you all about. And, of course, I take you guys' phone calls, whether it's advice, gossip, or whatever. There is this man for 26 years. He thought he was white come to find out he's really black and he even looks black and everything. So his mom and dad 
wait until I tell you how they explain this off to him. Anyway, keep it real. That was the most erratic, weird interview I'd ever heard. Ever heard. The Wendy Williams Experience. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, love, love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's windy, man. Here it is. Yeah. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS New York. Yeah. Welcome, everyone. They say that the E! Channel asked Joy Behar to do the red carpet. And Joy respectfully declined, you know, out of feelings for Star Jones. Um, Joy would be a good pick for the red carpet. I find her funny. I've been a fan of Joy Behar long before The View. You know, she used to be a radio personality. And um, I would listen to her radio program. Here in New York. So did Sally Jesse years ago. I remember when I used to make the trek from from D.C. to New York um, back in 1988. And Sally Jesse was a syndicated relationship person. And she'd be on late at night. Like maybe 10 o'clock at night. Like, you know, I'd have, I'd have to be, you know, report for duty from D.C. I'd have to be on here in New York at like midnight. And I'd listen to Sally Jesse. <clears throat> the great thing about AM, AM radio waves is that, you know, <clears throat> they go far. So I'd be able to listen to her virtually as soon as I got out of D.C. Mm, she was my riding companion. Terry Hatcher and Lisa Kudrow and Courtney Cox and Tom Hanks and Rod Stewart are among the celebrities that have um, given their star power to Lacoste, the famous alligator symbol. Well, they're doing something for charity, the Lacoste people, and so they've called in these celebrities um, as a part of a fundraiser for pediatric AIDS. Um, this, the, they're doing a charity auction. It's going to be at lacoste.com slash USA, and they're going to auction off some shirts or some things designed by these celebrities. And the auction is going to benefit the Elizabeth Glacier Pediatric AIDS Foundation. That's nice. That's one of the great things, you know, about celebrities and stuff. I mean, you know, we talk about them like dogs. We talk about them here on the show, I know. But I love to see that kind of stuff. You know. And it, it really doesn't doesn't really, I guess, mean much when a celebrity, for instance, zhuzhes up a pair of UGG boots, you know, with the, with all kinds of hearts and stars and flowers and everything. But they actually come out with some cute stuff in their own non-creative kind of way or creative way or whatever. I, I don't know. I like that kind of stuff. I, I like to see that kind of stuff. Um, Foxy Brown has this big article in the new People magazine, she's talking about losing her hearing. Um, do I believe this is about publicity? Yeah. Do I believe that there's something to her losing her hearing? Yeah, that too. Do I think that she lost all of her hearing? No. The morning of her mother's, her mother's sister passed away, so her aunt. She says, the morning of the funeral, I woke up and I couldn't hear anything. Not the TV, not my car horn, not a dial tone on the phone. Of course, I still had to go to the funeral. I sat in the front row and I couldn't hear the choir. Jay-Z was there and I said, Jay, I think I'm deaf. And he was like, you can't be deaf. But I knew. And I said, Monday morning, we need to go to a doctor to find out. Initially, they, she says that the doctor um, told her that if she attacked the problem when she first realized it, her hearing, um, I first realized that my hearing was, uh, you know, they might have been able to do something. She says, I first, I, um, I probably would have been able to heal immediately, but because I waited for about a week and continued to work and work and work, the pressure on my ear was what really damaged it. So she's saying that they put her on um, prednisone. Which, oh, and also an antiviral medication. And she says she went home with false hope, taking the medication, hoping that it would work. After two weeks of being on the drugs, her hearing came back and she thought 
I'm not telling anybody about this. I'm going to keep it a secret. Excuse me, none of her hearing came back after two weeks on the drugs. So she said she's going to keep it a secret. I'm going to try to go on normally. I'm going to pretend I can hear. And after a few weeks of reading lips and pretending, she's speaking loudly and asking other people to speak loudly. So now she's come out with it. Mm. A listener brought up a good point yesterday. Now, I know that that Foxy has, um, you know, it's come out in the recent years, Foxy being caught up in a number of of drugs. Uh, That's no secret. But was one of these drugs Oxycontin, the same thing that Rush Limbaugh was on? And then, you know, he's going through the hearing thing, too. You know, I don't know. Raven says, I saw your New York Magazine article. I found it to be very fascinating. Yeah. In a really messy kind of way. Right, Raven? The photo makes you look shell-shocked like you did two tours in Iraq. Yeah. Yeah, that's in this week's New York Magazine. It's on newsstands now. It's a four-page article. It's a big article. In my opinion, a good look. Regardless of how... The picture, look, the, the main picture that they, that they took. Somebody told me earlier, you know, rant and rave, you know, badmouth everybody, blah, 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 so on and so forth. But publicity is publicity. I mean, how can I turn around and be mad at the writer of the article? There were a few things that he said that were, not, were absolutely not true. And... A few things that were taken out of context. For instance, I don't have the article in front of me, but he, the article started off where I said to him, look, diamonds, I've arrived. That's not that's not what I said. He asked me about jewelry, my jewelry, and I was explaining to him the significance of a right hand ring. And I was explaining that a right hand ring, you know, out of all the other jewelry, whatever, You know, I was explaining that a right hand ring, you know, for a woman is that, you know, she's arrived in terms of her independence, in terms of, you know, I mean, and and all the the Tiffany's and the big jewelry lines are all touting this right hand ring thing. You know, if you're married, then your left hand is we, you know, this is what he did for you. But your right hand is what you can do for yourself. Sisters, we be doing it for ourselves. (laughs) And I said, I've arrived. I mean, that sounds like something I would say. So, you know, it, it was... Twisted. While the quote was taken out of context, it is what, you know, like I looked at the whole article with a screwy face. Art, you did lick a Marie's feet, but you don't do that to guests. It made it sound in the article like you do that all the time. He even asked me on the phone, did I do it to you before? He has like a lot of strange questions. Yeah. But you're big enough now. You should only do Q&As for now on these magazines. Just do Q&As. No. Oh, no, I, no. Only in your mind, Art. Do Q and A's only. That way, they have to quote you directly. No, but that's that's what the media does. They, that's they what the media. That's what this show the does. Thing. Exactly. I like. I could not believe that people were telling me. You know, <clears throat> Wendy, you should you know rag on everybody and blah blah blah. Look at this radio show. The very foundation that it's built on is truth. A piece of truth. Okay, we might we might have gotten the color of the woman wrong, but you were cheating on your wife. You know, like like you know. This show is kind of like that article. There was a lot of truth, but a couple of absolute lies and a bit of taken out of context stuff. But it's certainly not worth suing or being upset or whatever, because I'm responding the way I would like for celebrities to respond to this show. I'm glad for the publicity. Four pages in New York Magazine. It is what it is. It is what it is. What it is. You know, do you know how many people read New York Magazine? How many new people might be listening to the show based on that messy picture and that crazy woman and her crazy show and her foot fetish producer? Her sister who doesn't want to be identified and her father who says he'd like to grab the mic himself and her mother who gives a backhanded comment of support? By saying, we've had to learn to be more open. 
They also gave another twisted quote my parents did. I forgot which one of them. I, I equate them being the same because I talk to them on the speakerphone all the time. So, you know, it's not like I can have a private conversation with my mother. She always tells my father anyway. So you might as well just talk to me on the speakerphone. I can just consider them one package. Yes. One of them old crows said, well, Wendy's always been successful in her own way. Exactly. What? Exactly. I mean, now, you know, they know how to define it. But in her own way, is that crazy or what? I can understand that. Because you're a strong person. you got a strong personality. No, but they do. I get it, though. I know my parents said a bunch of stuff, but they took out the weirdest, quirkiest stuff. Just making everybody around me just sound crazy and whatnot. Well, I'll take it, though. Publicity is publicity. At the end of the day, Goose, what? It is what it is. There you go. That's the subtitle of this entire show. It is what it is. Yes. Can't change it. You can't alter it. You can't, you know, it is what it is. That's how I take you guys, Marilyn Million, the judge from People's Court. She was here earlier. She was here for advice hour, you know. One of uh, the listening family called up. I'm like, all right. And Marilyn Million also, she was on advice hour because she's also got a column on Match.com, which specializes in relationships. You know, she's been married for a plethora of years. She's got three daughters. You know, she's doing the damn thing. On Match.com, she gives advice regarding small claims, court, domestic violence issues in family, you know, and, and stuff like that. So we go to the telephone and the first phone call. Oh, I was so embarrassed. But it is what it is. And, and that's it. The person said, you are harder ruling on black people than you are on Spanish people. And whenever it's black versus Spanish, Latino or Latina, you always rule in favor of the Latina, Latina. Whenever I see that it's one versus the other on the show, I always know how you're going to rule. I was clenching my booty cheeks the whole time with embarrassment. I wanted to quickly get the listener off the phone, but you want to know what? She didn't want me to. As soon as I started saying, okay, we have to, you know, Judge Marilyn was like, nah, -uh, we're going to ride this out. I was embarrassed. But you know what? The subtitle of the show is It Is What It Is. You were embarrassed too, Elisa? Yes, and I was like, oh, why didn't we take the call off? Why didn't we take the calls in the break? I really was embarrassed. Because if we take the calls during the break, then we're not taking advantage of the eight second delay. See, that's one of the disadvantages of, of you know, now we could just take the calls immediately. But that's what the show is. That's what the show is. And Judge Marilyn, she probably did, you know. But she, she was really good. She was she, like, I want to, I'll talk to her. She was excellent. She was excellent. Like, you know. Then some people called up. They were like, you know, do you need a new bailiff? I was like all embarrassed. Like you all didn't understand the directions of advice hour. This woman is here. Let's take advantage of this. But she loves you and she loves the show. She wants to come back. Yeah. When they're in, um, when they're in break over there at the people's court, they listen to the show. The judge came here. She got her mid... Lisa, did you see her mid-drift out? Yes. I'm and her back drift, too. Yeah. It wasn't just the mid-drift. It was the back drift. And I got to tell you, Mama Sita is hot. She's fit. Pendulous breast. Oh. She's fit, yeah. What was that? A full C cup? Yeah. You can't see all this under the robe. I have to tell you something. What is she, about five feet six, five feet seven? Mm-hmm. And she had her open-toed sandals in this weather. She was oh, open-toed sandals. Mm -hmm. She really like had a... Four heels yes, feet. and an extra, um, you know, jewelry embellishment. Mm -hmm. Not all the Negrodian diamonds and stuff like that. Although she was wearing a Rolex. She had a, she a had tennis bracelet. But she had a Chanel quilted bag. She had on her mother. She said she wore her mother's... Um, what was that? A leopard print jacket. jacket that her mother had way back when. Wow. From Cuba. Vintage leopard print. She looked like a real hot, you know, like, wow, look at the face of the judge. You know, uh, not just her face, but I'm talking about the face of judges in general. We always think a tight, well, more like Condoleezza Rice, you know, when you think of a judge. How you doing, by the way? <laughs> Billy Joel tried to kill himself by drinking furniture polish. Oh. <laughs> because he was so tormented by an affair with his drummer's wife. He's got a book out. It's called Billy Joel, The Life and Times of a Young Man. It reveals that he was having an affair with Elizabeth Smalls, who was his drummer's wife. And he was depressed and prepared to take his own life over it. So he drank furniture polish. How did that not work? Or not burn out some vocal cords or something? 
Wait, this just in from Elisa. Oh. She stands right next to the microphone, but she gives me the story. Ladies and gentlemen, Montel Williams is taking his wife, his, his ex-wife, Grace Williams, who happens to be friend to the show. She's been here before. To court again on Tuesday and Thursday morning in Stanford, Connecticut. Oh. He's trying to lower his child support for his children in half. And here in front of me, I have the court papers. It's not the actual court papers. This is just all the motions he filed against her. Yeah. In four years. Does it say anything about the cable man up the block? Oh! In the, in the cable truck? No. Okay. But all the motions is like, what, four or five pages long? Yeah. Wow. All right, we'll keep you posted on that case. In the meantime, while the judge was here, I had to let her know that Judge Judy just signed a new deal for $125 million. That's okay, because Judge Millian, this is the fifth season of People's Court. Judge Judy is 63. I love Shineland also. I, I, I do have to say that. They're my two favorites. You know, they're just... No, oh, apparently somebody doesn't know that I'm Wendy Williams. They're thinking I'm Wendy Wellington. <laughs> yeah, let me turn my... Let me turn my phone down. One day I see you have your um Yeah, I mean it's cute. Your denim Max um what um, that um a phone a cell phone holder. holder. Yeah, yeah. Very cell phone holder. Yeah. It's purple fox. It'll last all of three days before I lose it, probably. I don't know. Anyway, Judge Judy, who has been doing the people's court for how long? Ten years? Ten years. I mean, not the People's Court, the um, Judge Judy Court. Well, she just signed a four-year deal where her annual income will be between 30 and $35 million per year. She says, I love what I do and the fact that the viewing public continues to enjoy the program. Oh, I'm sorry, you all. I thought I turned it down. There go my ring. There go my ring. All right, hold on. Down. Sorry. Thirty-five um, million dollars a year. Oh, she debuted on um, in in nineteen ninety six. Judge Judy did. So Marilyn Million, you know, she's only forty four years old. She's got a definite shot at doing this. Just a, a a real pretty woman, and the whole judge yeah so yeah you know they're about to cancel that judge alex i don't even know who he is and i never thought that judge joe brown brought much to the judge shows do you follow country music at all i don't follow it at all i mean i know the biggies when they do something scandalous i've never heard of chris cagle have you well, apparently he got the shock of his life when he found out that he's not the father of his girlfriend's newborn son. Oh! That's why I brought the story to you all, because it's not do you know him or not. It's just that these types of Negroidian things go on all the time. Sources say that he was stunned at the re- revelation that his um, singing girlfriend has been unfaithful. Her name is Tammy Wheeler, and she got the boot. In the meantime, dude Chris is 36. He was real excited about the, 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 the birth of the son. And that was an inspiration for him to stop drinking. And then he became suspicious that she was cheating. So he demanded a DNA test and discovered the child wasn't his. And he's devastated beyond belief. No word on whether he's going back to the bottle or not. But, you know, it happens. Yeah. I wonder who the father is. Probably the drummer in the band. Ashton Kutcher. Okay, so listen to this. Do you ever watch the show with Fran Drescher? I think it's on the chopping block. I might be the only one when I catch it. I couldn't tell you what night or what channel it comes on. All I do is, all I know is that I've always had an affection for the nanny Franny. I like Fran Drescher. I like her story. I like the story of the struggle. You know, she married her high school sweetheart. Um, He she was raped in front of him when the home invaders came in and and they were having a little dinner party. It was um, she and her husband, um, along with um, another couple. So there were four of them in the house and the knock, knock, knock at the door. And the, the bad guys pushed in the door, tied up the men and made the men watch as they raped the girls. Nanny Franny was raped. And it was just devastating. 
And I like how she incorporates like her parents in on, um, you know, like at one point she had her parents making guest appearances on the the front, the, the nanny, whatever. The point is that I like her. <clears throat> so now, not only is she dating Young in real life, but on TV she's got this sitcom. It's about to be canceled. I might be the only one that watches. Like I told you, I couldn't even tell you what it's called or when it's on. All I know is, is that Franny Nanny is um, shacked up with a boyfriend who's like 25. And her kids are like 18 and maybe 15. <clears throat> you know. So here's Ashton Kutcher with this brilliant, he thinks, his original idea about a man who marries an older woman. The sitcom is tentatively called 30-Year-Old Grandpa. The kids are almost as old as he is. He would star in the show. And this is um, the idea of one of the executive producers. This is what she says. It started out as an idea about a mother and a daughter having kids <clears throat> at the same time. <clears throat> it then dawned on us that the guy's point of view on this is the comedy hook. It's modern, it's messy, it's a look at an extended American family. It's being done right now with Nanny Franny. It's not working. Nobody's watching. I know what I watch on Fridays. On Friday, I was trying to think about what I watch um, when I get home from work before um, the Kelly Ripa show, the sitcom. I don't think people are watching that the way they used to either. I'll tell you what show I got hooked on. You know that English woman who's the nanny? Nanny 911? I watch that. She's good. She's good. I mean, I watch it peering through my fingers sometimes because, oh, my gosh, you know, that's my plight. Nanny, help me, too. And then other times, like, you know, how do parents get run over like this? How, how are you going to let your own kids hit you and not turn around and crack their skull? Robert Blake bought Vitello's, the place where he killed, excuse me, where he was accused and then got off of killing his uh, woman, Bonnie Lee uh, Blake Bakley. Remember, he went back in the restaurant to get his gun from the banquette? That was Vitello's restaurant. He was friendly enough with the restaurant, you know, in better days where they had a meal named after him and everything. So now... And it's located in Studio City in California. He just bought Vitello's. And he also signed <clears throat> a deal for a reality show where it's all going to center around him. And, and, you know, now he bought Vitello's to really judge it up, you know, judge up public interest in wanting to watch it. He got a reality show. I guess, you know, how is life? After being accused of murder. Bada bing. What are you guys talking about? 866 Get Wendy. We can talk about whatever you want. Hello, hi. Hi. How are you? Okay. Good, nice to have you here. Did I win? No, there's no winning to be done. Oh. Thanks for calling. Oh. Bye bye. Hello. 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 Hello, Wendy. Yes. What's going on, baby? It's Trucker Dick. Hey, Trucker Dick. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but yo, don't even sweat that guy earlier. That was cool. This is that's your show. That's how we do. Yeah. Like, you know you're gonna get somebody who's gonna call with some off the wall comment that has nothing related to what's happening. Yeah, you know, I was just embarrassed because the judge was here and I was trying to be a bit dignified. Yeah, and actually, too, I was like, I can't believe money doing that. Yeah, you were here okay. listening, yeah. Yep, I was there. I was driving, and I'm still I'm still driving now. What? I'm going to try to come see you tomorrow night so I can bring my for you to sign. Oh, I would love to. Thank you, Trucker Dick. All right, baby. Talk to you all soon. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Mm. Truck a dick. <laughs> Tr truck, Wendy. A, truck a dick. Huh? Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Wendy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. You know, New York Magazine should be thanking you because if half of your listeners go out and pay the two ninety nine for mm -hmm. their magazine, sales are going to go through the roof. But you want to know what? And by the same token, if half of their non-listening readers are, are remotely moved by the crazy article about the crazy woman 
then <laughs> that I need to thank them also because it's it's interest like that that keeps this show where it is. True, true. You know, so you know we we self serve we serve both of everybody got served. I wanted to ask you yesterday. Did you catch me on Friday? Oh no! You wait. You got cut off. You got another call coming through. Did I catch what? Did you catch 2020 on Friday? No, because it's not what I watch when I go home. I watch the nanny 911. What do they do on 2020? Oh, I thought about you throughout the entire show. It had the top 10 germs. Germ. Germ. And it came yes. on at 10 o'clock, and I did catch. I was in and out. Yes, I was thinking I was thinking about you throughout the entire show. One of the interesting things that I walked away with is you know the bathroom um the handle when you first when you leave the bathroom the the doorknob is the cleanest yes. part of the bathroom because everybody's hands are freshly washed for the most part. And they were saying that uh the ladies shouldn't leave their purses on the bathroom floor. Yes. And I'm thinking to myself, who does these things anyway? I know. I don't even put but- it on the back of the toilet. Surprisingly, they said that the toilet seat was the cleanest part in the bathroom. When you got a bag and there's no hook on the back of the door, where do you put your bag? I'd rather hang it around my neck before I put it on that filthy bathroom floor. Oh, that's a good idea. All, most of my handbags, like my favorite ones, I, I hang in the elbow bend of my arm so they don't fit around my neck. Mm-hmm. So you know what I do? I keep the door. I keep the door to the stall open. I rest it on the sink and I watch it. And if I hear somebody coming in, oh well, she's just going to get a full gander. <laughs> I'm even afraid sometimes to hang the purse on the hook of the bathroom door because then somebody comes around and snatches your bag, your bag right off the hook. That happens in the airports and stuff. I know what you mean. Oh well. And my <laughs> husband's not a bag holder, so therefore I just got to figure out what I'm going to do. He's not holding a bag. You know, well, you always got the kids. Bring them in the bathroom and make them hold the purse. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. All right, well, thank you for listening and calling and stuff. Oh, uh, anytime, Wendy, anytime. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Hi, it's Wendy. Hey, Wendy. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. Okay, I called because I was watching Starting Over this morning. And you saw and Superhead. That chicken head sitting here trying to give people advice on being a whore. Listen, I was in the office and we were watching it with gaping mouths. Yeah, uh, you guys, ch- um, Superhead, I was almost going to call it Chicken Head. Superhead is um, one of the life coaches on Starting Over. She's life coaching a girl who used to, um, you know, be a pole dancer in a club. Superhead did not mention all the richer she's been, you know, wrapped around. But she did talk about, you know, that she used to be a stripper. She she even glazed over her past. She completely meant, didn't mention that she went around sleeping with everybody under the sun. And that her name is Superhead. She wasn't just sleeping with. She's Exactly. I was watching TV and I'm sitting there I'm like your name is Superhead yes what are you about <laughs> are you on the treadmill no I'm actually watching roll bounce and it sucks oh okay you sound a little out of breath I'm in the movie theater so I'm trying to speak quietly oh oh my gosh <laughs> she's calling me back. Just to say I love the show Wendy thank you take care bye 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 I wonder if she's listening in one ear and Wow, I love that. By the way, Ayanla Von Zant's coming in later on in the week so we can ask her about Superhead being on the show because Ayanla still is the life coach. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Hello? Hi, Wendy Williams. Hi. Hi, I'm calling because um, I forgot to get that number from that doctor that you had, Dr. Harvey J. What did we talk about? Harvey J, you had the, Oh, um, the, the hair the, person. The hair doctor. You know what? Hang up and keep listening. And I know that Elisa will probably run around here any minute now and um, give the information, okay? Okay. Okay, take care. Thank you. Harvey J, everybody, is in Manhattan, and he specializes in <clears throat> a, some sort of special way of hair removal. that Pulse light, pulse light hair light. removal that is better than laser <clears throat> and all of the above. So, um, give me a moment on that. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Hi. I just wanted to make a comment on Beyonce. I don't know if she is pregnant or not, but worst case scenario, it would be a fat kid with a big nose and big lips. Oh. How you doing? <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, you know what? That might be Elisa on the telephone. You can answer that behind the scenes. Why not? Elisa? Yeah. Oh, hi. Okay, good. It is you on the VIP line. Um... It's com is his website. Okay, doctor. Um, and that's the regular way you spell Harvey and then J-A-Y for J? Yeah. Okay. Doc- or, or it's www.md-laserderm.com. Okay. 
That's bye. cool. Great. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. What's even cooler is that we can just... Why are you spraying so much perfume, Art? And why are you putting that vitamin grease on your lips? What are you up to? I got a, I got a blind date from somebody on the internet today. <laughs> really? At a Starbucks. What? Like, she's half Colombian and Ecuadorian. Gorgeous. Wow. You met her... All, so is her picture on the internet? Yeah. Can I take a look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you shush it up. And um, we'll go to the telephone and talk to more of our it's listening fans. Like see it first. Okay. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Hey, Wendy, what's going on? Yeah, well, you know. All right, hey, hey, it is what it is. Yes. Uh, question for you. Listen, what's going on with the game? He's on G-Unit, not on G-Unit. He's got black balls here. What's going on? Well, he's still with G-Unit. I, You know, I would imagine he's just riding out whatever contractual deal that he has with them. Right. And then, you know, he'll be on his way. Yeah. But, you know. Well... All right, thanks. I want to go hear myself. Thanks, Wendy. Oh, you're welcome. Bye-bye. He said I want to go hear myself. <laughs> Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. How you doing, Wendy? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm calling from Connecticut. He said I want to hear myself. <laughs> Hi, how are you? All right. Uh, well, I'm calling because uh, as far as uh, there's nowhere to hang out in Connecticut, you know, because I guess due to idiot people, you know shooting and causing problems to the clubs and mm-hmm. all that. They really need to grow up, really. Well, I mean, you know, the nightlife has changed a bit, you know, over the years. Um, I find that um, there are two things that have proven to be just, like, really great hangouts for mature people. One of them happens to be, and yeah, this is self-serving, but I'm telling you it's true, the Wendy Williams comedy experience at the Laugh Factory on Wednesdays. Yes. Because it starts late enough where you're getting that nightlife ends exactly. early enough where, you know, you can go on and either do something else or go home. There's drinks. There's yeah. women. You're not pressed to have to ask somebody to dance because it's a comedy yeah. club. I mean, yeah. I invite you every Wednesday. We're there at the Laugh Factory. It's 42nd Street and 8th Avenue. Oh, okay. The uh, other thing is keep listening to the show because the Dons and Divas extravagant. Oh, wait. Hold on. Art's, um, Art's internet data is up. Wait, hold on. Let me just take a walk. Oh, she is very beautiful. I'll tell you, everybody, who she looks like she's in the same family as... Oh, gosh. And I like Linda Lopez. Not the exact same family, but, you know, um, the same hairstyle and a beautiful smile. What about Eva Mendez? Yeah, Eva Mendez. The point is, is that... uh, Do you have a full body shot of her art? Because that's only from the shoulders. There might be a whole lot going on. Oh. Below the shoulders. Hey, he, he didn't get her. He didn't get her because he works on the show, did he? She don't know who I am. She don't even listen to this. No. Okay. So, That's the whole purpose of me being on the internet, <clears throat> so I can get people that don't even know who I am. I, did I, you I, give her your fake, fake Dominican name? She thinks you're half Dominican yourself. <laughs> oh, she knows Chico. She, Chico. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. But I'm gonna tell her tonight is my nickname, and I'll tell her the real name. All right. Are you meeting her at the Starbucks here in the lobby of the building? No, 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 no. no down on 36th. I was gonna say crew because we could all press our faces up to the glass. <laughs> Down, down the street. Down the street. She lives, she lives down the street. Oh, All right, how have can, a good day. Thank you. You too, sir. Bye bye. <laughs> she lives down the street, so this is perfect for midnight delight in the pink room. No, she has her own spot. Oh, yes. What does she do for a living? International trading or something. International, like something with international. Mm, something. Oh. You better watch that. That might be code word for running them yams. Uh oh. Uh oh. Super trader. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, answer that behind the scenes, Goose. <clears throat> what was he asking me, that man on the phone? I wanted to elaborate on what he was saying. We have to take a break. Oh, let me leave you with the Wendy Williams Experience um, web poll question. Okay, so yesterday, all right, first of all, the, we- the website is thewendywilliamsexperience.com. Yesterday we asked, do you play the lottery? 50% of you said yes, and 50% of you said no. The new question up for today, we'll give you the results tomorrow. Do you brush after every meal? Oh. There's a couple of coworkers here that have actual toothbrushes. I've seen them in here. Kendra from the sales department. She brushes after every meal. This was the guy who cuts the checks. Anthony. I forget his name. And Anthony, br- Anthony, Anthony brushes? Yeah. That's only yeah. brushes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has dreads. Okay. That's why he doesn't brush his hair. He's stupid. <laughs> all right, look, you all. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, I'll take more of your phone calls. And we can gossip. You know, um, about what all's doing. All right. Keep it where you got it. It's WBLS.
What it do, what the business is, man. It's your boy, Young Jeezy. You're listening to the bonus hour on 107.5 mm. WBLS. Jeezy's going to court. I was talking about it earlier. Um, he's been paying $178 in child support per month, and his baby's mother wants that increased significantly to the tune of $20,000 a month. So, you know, we'll see where, where that goes. Hey, I have something for you to win here at WBLS. Caller number 10 right now on the phones, 866-GET-WENDY, is going to pick up perm cream, Dr. Miracle's <laughs> brand new Thermocuticle Intensive No Lie Relaxer System. It leaves your hair soft and shiny and ready to be styled. And you, my friend, can win that right now. So Marilyn Monroe gave um, JFK a Rolex watch for his birthday on that night that she sang Happy Birthday, Mr. President. And it was just auctioned off and it fetched $120,000. It wasn't just any Rolex. It was a gold Rolex with an inscription. It says... Jack, with love, always from Maryland, May 29th, 1962. And inside the watch case, which the winner, uh, the, uh, the winner of the auction also received, was a piece of paper with a poem titled, A Heartfelt Plea on Your Birthday. Let lovers breathe sighs. Let roses bloom and music sound. Let passion burn on the lips and eyes. And pleasure, merry world, go round. Let golden sunshine flood the sky. Let me love or let me die. And she died two months later. You know, that overdose of sleeping pills, she was 36. They ruled her death a probable suicide. Mariah Carey was in a club in London and, you know, she and her crew were up there with the DJ um, in the DJ booth, you know, listening to the music and having a grand old time drinking and whatnot. And all of a sudden, the DJ threw on Beyonce's rendition of If You Should Ever Be Lonely. And Mariah whispered to one of her entourage, who whispered to the DJ, immediately was stopped. And they put Mariah's song. She, you know, she did a version of If You Should Ever Be Lonely from her 1999 remix album. So they took off Beyonce, they put on Mariah, and then Mariah stood up in the balcony and waved to everyone. And um, I just love it. I love it. So about that man who, was, um, who thought he was white for 26 years, he says, uh, his mother, Judy, kept it from him for 26 years. She would tell him that he suffered from a skin disease called melanosis. And that's why his skin was brown. Clearly, if you look at the picture of the little boy, the little boy was raised with a white brother and sister, and he's clearly black. You see that right there. Mm-hmm. Well, it wasn't until um, he grew up, you know, and, and the kids were making fun of him, so on and so forth. He went through his teens, just knowing something wasn't right, but his mother would never talk. Turns out the mother was a nurse in a psychiatric hospital and had an affair um, with an orderly became pregnant and this is actually um the stepfather so when i say affair i just mean you know she was sleeping with the orderly she wasn't married at the time but she does have uh, two other children one younger and one older i don't know how that all works out the point is is and and fortunately the woman is old enough so there i guess was this terrible stigma back then the the, the mother looks to be now about 75 years old so hopefully those kind of stigmas have been, um, you know, put in the past. They grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. Or actually, no, the real father lives in Cleveland. So when he was 26, 27, he moved to a community in California where he says there were more people who looked like him. And other black people. And so um, his mother one day... Um, told him his his real father's name. His real father looks like David Dinkins, by the way. And um, so he called every one with the last name in Ohio and finally got in touch with the father and like that. Well, the story seemed like a bigger deal when I was reading it in my head. You know, sometimes things just don't translate. I was like, oh, I'm going to bring this to the show. And now I brought it. I have no feeling in reading it. I could give a rat's ass. I'm sorry for wasting your time. Dear Wendy, I highly doubt that Beyonce is pregnant. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Yes, yes. 
I mean, really. Now, why? Why with no ring? She's much smarter than that. Her buzz is still high and she doesn't need a publicity stunt. I think it's just people assuming things or trying to make a name for themselves. And please, do you really think <clears throat> that Jay is trying to lock her down <clears throat> like this? <clears throat> nah. They do it really big in the Grodian. Well, I got to tell you something. Katie Holmes and Tom Cruise have given a pass for them to actually, if, if she is pregnant, come out. They're not married yet either. Oh, the intentions are good. They're planning the wedding and so on and so forth. Are Jay-Z and Beyonce even engaged? They're not even engaged. I mean, I don't know. I don't believe she's pregnant. Oh, shout out to White Mike who sends this in. He says, how you doing? And he says, Joey Lawrence, legendary. I've heard that about Joey Lawrence, though. Oh, please. As cute as his little behind is. Been cute all these years. Shout out to Miss Hibiscus who says, Wendy, hey, here's a question. What are your career goals as you rapidly approach status of senior citizen radio personality? I'm interested in knowing what you plan on doing as you evolve into an older woman, showing by, shown by the crow's feet on your eyes. She must have looked at that article in the New York um, magazine. I think she means this in a really catty, hateful kind of way. But I'm going to answer her in a non-catty, thank you for the question kind of way. I'm waiting for Joan Hamburg to die. And I'm waiting for me to get, you know, a bit older. For I have already spotted out what I want to do, whose position I want to have, and like that. In addition... I figure Ritz Harper, if all goes well, will take me through a few books. I'm starting my novel series. Ritz Harper, drama is her middle name. The book on Random House will be released in June of 2006. I figure I'm good for some Ritz Harpers. Um, and just putzing around. Right now I'm socking away. You know, I have a retirement and so on and so forth. I don't, you know, I'm realistic. But that's what I plan on doing, smart ass, as long as you ask. Yeah. I plan on growing old with my audience, including your old ass. Oh. That's what. Yeah. I hope I make it. Because God knows, you know. I got a biopsy this week, a CAT scan next week. Yeah. I thought I told you that. Oh, no, 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 no please. Here we go please, 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 please. Sorry. Please. <laughs> <laughs> the biopsy is just, uh, they want to take uh, cells from my thyroid. The doctor saw something that didn't look right. Oh, my God. And then the CAT scan is because my orbital specialist who works on my Graves disease, which, comes along, with, which comes along with thyroid disease, oh. he wants to look at my head from a top point of view, look inside to see how my muscles are pressing against my eyeballs and pushing them out. So, but don't worry, I'm, I'm holding it together. I need an application to Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm old enough to make it, you know, yes, I, you know, I no longer look to retire from radio. I look to grow old with it. Now it won't be popular radio the way I'm on right now. It'll be something AM, something down the dial. But, but you know what? It is, hopefully, it won't even be that the check matters, because hopefully I'm doing the right thing right now. But it'll be, it'll be keeping my mind sharp. Like, I really enjoy coming in here and talking to you people. Check, no check, whatever. But as long as I'm here and I'm in my prime, I'm going to, you know, harass the bosses for all I'm worth. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Dear Wendy, damn you for blowing up the spot about Dominique. If you tell every damn body, then I won't be, it won't be worth buying because every damn body's going to have it on. <laughs> no, because people are still spending their money, you know, on, on diamonds, thinking that you all know the difference and whatnot. And the fact that this comes from Advice Hour. Um, you know, I crow about QVC and HSN. And, you know, there was a time when I was like the queen of Dominique. You know, and I still I still love to watch, and I so recommend it. I love the summer size with Suzanne Summers. I love when Colleen and Suzanne get on there and they sell their stuff. I feel like I'm one of the girlfriends in the room. Whether I'm buying or not is incidental. I like the company. I love QVC HSN. And I think Diamonique is like the best kept secret. Too many people are spending their potential retirement money, you know. I mean, unless you got it like that. You know, you got some slob who's going to give it to you or whatever. But uh, Diamonique is the way to go. At QVC. 
I gotta go. Oh, this just in. Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday to Angel Lee Lattimore from Cambria Heights. Her birthday is Thursday. She won? You gave out a contest. <laughs> I did? <laughs> what was it for? Oh, the No Lie Relaxer. Oh. Oh, well, now, look, it's all blown up. <laughs> she got the BDVs and called the radio station to get a Congratulations, Angeli Lattimore. And um, happy birthday on Thursday. All right, you guys, God willing, you know, you'll hold up. I'll hold up. We'll be back together again tomorrow. I love being here with you all. Now, yesterday, and forever. <laughs> Vaughn's next with the quiet storm. Bye. <laughs>